And we are recording. Hanar, you may take over. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, today is a very uh, sad day as we will uh, remember Michael one more time. Yet we do not want to forget him. So indeed, this is one of those events that we will remember him again and again. So he's a unforgettable person, a friend, a scientist. And probably you are, many of you are from all walks of life. And we thank you for registering and coming here. I'm not going to overwhelm the, uh, the, uh, the discussions. I will try to uh, go to the family right away. And we, uh, as we go, I will add a couple of things here and there. Uh, we will have about two hours of uh, discussions. If there is uh, more to say after that, we can stay for one more hour. And all these things will be recorded. It will be available at YouTube from now on, along with the other conferences that we will be organizing on his behalf. Uh, welcome again. Uh, first, I would like to invite Nadia Mishenko with Sergei. Nadia is... Uh, Michael's uh, wife, and uh, I don't see her, but I imagine she's around here, Nadia. Maybe she has not joined yet. Then why why don't we go directly to Andre? Andre is okay. Here. okay. Nadia, hello. Yes. It's nice to see you. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Um, thank you to the committee very much. And everyone who took part in organizing this event, uh, dedicated to the Michael and his scientific works. Uh, so thank you everyone for coming to honor his memory. No, you know, my name is Nadia. I was his wife, spouse. <clears throat> so we meet in philosophy classes. We both went to the PhD program. And um, like after half a year, we already married and began a, a life together, which was lasted um, 35 years. It was wonderful years. I like it. And thank you, Michael, so much when, where you are now. So we have three adorable children and very beloved ones, Sergei, Natasha, and Drusha. Uh, so they now very much grown up to the wonderful people of what, I mean, uh, so I'm a little bit nervous and um, uh, so uh, Michael, um, uh, so Michael teach me a lot of things. He was like a teacher to me now, even he was my husband. We work together and we live together. We spend a lot of time together and he teach me many things like so think before you say something or act something. He was very responsible for his words. He was respecting um, his uh, point of view and was forgiving his mistakes. So I was teaching, I was learning from him to do the same. Um, so, um, uh, so I want to say like about one interesting thing about Michael that he saved his Natasha's life, his daughter like a few times. Um, one time she was on my hand and she was having very high fever and I was not knowing what to do because she was shaking and he just took her from my hands and start to do, um, help her to breathe. And after this, she became back to life. So, and another thing, she was here in America, she was start to run to the edge of the roof and um, he just screamed to her, stop. And I was, I was looking at her, but I was kind of uh, was not able to say anything. But Michael was kind of very aware of what is going on around. So he saved her life a few times. He was a very good father. He was with Sergei last year, very much spending time and energy. He was um, with Andrew, our first son. And he, they were together spending a lot of time when Natasha was born. They were loving to go to Michael's work in Kiev to, uh, and around. Yes, so Michael was really great, super father. Thank you so much. 
Also, he was a very super husband. I can complain about this. And he was very, very good and loving son. He loved his mother very, very much. He was very supportive to her. He also loved his father. And he has very great father and mother. Um, they were intelligent people. And um, his mother was a um, director of the library. And Michael was growing pretty much between books. That's why he kind of was helping him. He loves books. And his father was uh, working in a factory. I don't remember his position, but he was not helping. He was not together as a family. He was living with another family, but he was visiting Michael a lot. So Michael had a very nice family and a very wonderful mom, very supportive and wonderful father. I'm very thankful to them. So we all know that Michael knows very many languages, was very fluent in languages, which has very was envy a little bit about this. His English was perfect, Ukrainian and Russian. And he was fluent in all of them. I know many people here speak, spoke, speak many languages, so, uh, but I don't know. And what else do I want to say about Michael? Um, let me just check what I want to say. Um, so, um, no, I miss him, of course, a lot, very much. And uh, I'm very thankful to everybody for this event, very big one event. And um, uh, Michael really deserves this, I think, because he was very dedicated to work and to science. He was very honest in his positions. And um, he was a um, very accurate person, very, very high intelligent. He was, um, he loved very much music. For example, he was going with us. He was taking family, going to grave um, uh, Sergei Rachmaninov. Where, um, it is near New York, a little bit far. He was driving in the car and took me and Sereja very often and to the concert to Rachmaninov also. He also showed us the building where Rachmaninov was living here in West End Avenue. So he's kind of very wide known person. He had many, many art books. He knows literature very well, very well. No, no, no. And um, so he was very impressed to be around, very interesting, talkative. He was very interesting to tell stories. And uh, what else? Um, look, very kind, very soft, very soft, very patient to the people, very patient. I can say this very kind and very, um, it was some hard stuff he was challenging, um, but he was survived, I don't know. I I'm done, thank you. Thank you very much, Nadia. This was very nice that you gave a uh, view of Michael that we don't necessarily know uh, from other walks of life. Now I would like to ask Andre to talk about his father. Andre, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, what I wanted to say was that uh, it's very heartwarming to see this level of appre appreciation coming out from the scientific community. Um, just as you guys didn't know that side of my dad's life, I always knew how important science was to him and how important the community was to him. And it's really nice to see that apparently that was uh, reciprocal. Uh, to be honest, it's a little bit surprising seeing all this happening. It's very cool and I, I really appreciate it, so. Um, yeah, the, the main thing I wanted to say was that his scientific life, it was really, really important to him. And I wanted just to, to thank all of you for being his friends and his colleagues and for being there for him all that time. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you, Andre. I need to... I talked about you uh, with Michael a few times. 
and I knew how proud he was <laughs> with you when you were in the Swiss in Switzerland at Google and so on. And he was really, really supportive of what you have been doing. So thank you for coming here. What we thought, uh, uh, maybe we can have a few uh, professional, uh, personal things together. And one person who has worked with Michael a lot over the years for ELS conferences and maybe outside the ELS conferences is Gordon uh, uh, Widin. So we would like to ask, we asked him to prepare a little bit longer uh, speech. Uh, we give everybody about three minutes, uh, but we give Gordon and then uh, to Yaroslav Yatskin after that, a few minutes longer. So I hope uh, they will be uh, talking about Michael's life in the United States and back in uh, before Michael came to United States. So first, I would like to give it to Gordon. Gordon, please go on. Unmute All your... right. Oh, there we go. I tried the unmute and it was already uh, unmuted. All right. I am going to share a picture here. I, I don't know if you can see it or not. We can see it. All right, great. Um, I primarily wanted to focus on the work that Michael had done in promoting and building the community that you see here today. And that's what I wanted to focus on because this is something that went back uh, more than two decades and that we worked on together and was very important to us. And I think you can see the results of that. So, this collage that I put together is just a few of the pictures which I feel are somewhat representative of things that I will bring up in my talk. And uh, you can go through them, but there's some nice, very nice memories of Michael. So in any case, um, as you know, we're here today to memorialize one of the founders and promoters of our community. And this community began over two decades ago the foundations were laid almost simultaneously by Yopov Nir and Thomas Reit, who commenced a series of conferences to promote light scattering in 1995. I had been to conferences before, but I never felt comfortable at them because they never addressed what I was working in. Uh, and I finally felt at home when I attended the second conference hosted by uh, Kari Lume in Helsinki in 1997. And this was a, a big turning point for me. The following year, Michael brought the series to New York in 1998 to incorporate American scientists into this community. This was extremely important to him and uh, something that he believed very strongly about. Um, I want to stress that these early meetings were very simple affairs. The uh, New York City Conference only had a conference fee of some $20, I believe. And this was primarily used to purchase beer for the poster session. And uh, one of my best memories was talking to Michael and Alphonse Hoekstra at the session until four in the morning. Our goal at the time was to finish the beer. I was very young at the time, uh, just out of being a postdoc. And I realized at that point that I got more value out of that evening's discussions with Alphonse and Michael than I did from the talks. And I realized that the social bonding that occurs is what leads to collaborations, which enhances the science. And these social interactions are a necessary requirement for building the community that we wanted to continue building and uh, which began a few years prior, but uh, in any case, this was an important aspect and something that we emphasized throughout. Um, at that um, poster session, we, I really began a long collaboration with Michael. Although we published together on occasion, this was quite different. And our collaboration was really meant in building and expanding the community of light scattering and promoting it. Many of you have your own stories about this uh, to tell. And uh, 
including, for instance, uh, Michael's Herculanean efforts at JQSRT, which are better left told by others, Michael had unlimited energy. And I will focus on my interactions and what I know best. While many of you know him for his light scattering work, he always referred to himself or as uh, radiative transfer. He referred to radiative transfer as his primary discipline and light scattering to him, uh, he called it more of a hobby. I, I think that's something that uh, can settle in and you can think about, especially with the contributions he's made in that field. So I'd like to talk about some of the interactions and conspiracies. Um, and many of these conspiracies and interactions revolved around our own joint desires to socialize, eat, drink, and discover what was on our minds, uh, science or otherwise. And we both felt very strongly that this ultimately would build our community and have a nonlinear effect on our science. And we knew that we could not do this without conferences, which provide the perfect venue for doing so. A few months after the New York City meeting, I asked Michael about the next conference, and I was surprised to find that, to his knowledge anyway, none had been planned. So I volunteered to organize the meeting in Halifax in 2000. At the time, there was no society, no committee, no protocol, nothing really to guide us. And this has remained the same. There's barely any now. We're uh, uh, really a, um, a strange community in that respect. Uh, Michael just said that that sounded good and to go ahead and plan the meeting. Uh, we soon found out that another meeting was also being planned in Vigo in 1999. So rather than organizing the fourth ELS meeting, we were actually organizing the fifth. Uh, remembering the New York City poster session, I wanted to incorporate as many opportunities to interact as possible. And I remember Michael having a huge smile on his face uh, at my suggestion of having 30 minute coffee breaks, which at that time was extremely unusual. And uh, he thought this was great and enough time to have actual discussions and to you know, be productive. So uh, I remember he told me that this was his type of conference and many, many times he, he liked some of the things we implemented. Our priorities, of course, were placed on the coffee breaks and opportunities to interact. And uh, we tried to increase this as much as possible. Uh, for us, the purpose of the talks were really to enhance the discussions during these breaks. Coffee and socializing was our real priority. Um, and our number one priority was to arrange for our future. And uh, we laid out the plans for the following ELS 6 meeting in Gainesville, Florida, which was hosted by Ludmilla Kolokolova and Bu Gustafsson, and uh, encouraged people to think about future meetings. Uh, this was critical to us because we did not want the community to die. Uh, most of the community at the time preferred to have meetings every other year, but Michael and I share the view that two years was much too long to go without seeing each other face to face and uh, having some social interaction. And many of our conspiracies were centered on squeezing in extra meetings where we could, despite this uh, every other meeting thought that was prevalent in the society. And if you look at the numbering system that we have, you'll see that we were uh, quite successful in this endeavor. Our first opportunity to do this happened the following year when uh, Miroslav Kotsife hosted a NATO advanced research workshop on uh, optics of cosmic dust in Bratislava. At this meeting, we began a tradition of round table discussions, which simply meant socializing but we used round table discussions in the program because it looked much better in the uh, paperwork that was submitted to NATO. At one of these discussions, Michael and several Ukrainian colleagues, including Vera Rosenbush, Janet Lugach, and Nikolai Kisilev, had the idea to integrate Ukraine into this growing community and have a conference there. What followed were two two week long NATO Advanced Science Institutes. And these were hosted by Yaroslav Yatsky of Yalta in 2003 and another one in Kiev in 2010. Um, NATO may not be completely supportive of astrophysics, but they are of remote sensing and the integration and synergy of remote sensing techniques developed by astronomers with detecting biological warfare agents 
made for successful proposals. And uh, we quite enjoyed putting these together. These uh, advanced study institutes were quite immense affairs and enormously expanded the community throughout Eastern Europe. And uh, wow, we did have many jokes about the roundtable discussions that Michael and I scheduled. I want to emphasize that many of the papers you see published in our community today had their roots in, these, in the collaborations that were formed in these roundtable discussions. And I think you can see that uh, if you look at the literature. One of the visions that Michael and I shared early on was having awards specific to the field of light scattering. Uh, this was a means of building standing and attracting attention to our community. Michael's vision and efforts brought us the Young Scientist and Career Scientist Awards through Elsevier, Elsevier, which have helped to elevate our community and most importantly, helped enhance career opportunities for the younger members. Our goal at this time was to try to expand this and give as many awards as possible. And uh, we have pushed this as much as possible. We had discussions on how to justify to Elsevier the need to give two awards when the voting was a tie. Uh, Michael was always doubtful that these arguments would convince the powers that be at Elsevier, but he always was successful in his presentations. I believe they also saw the benefit of making additional awards to the community. And perhaps it did not take much convincing after all. For over two decades, I have worked with Michael to help with the dream of building this community, the success of which can be demonstrated here today. Michael and I shared many common visions but had different views and skills, which is important for a successful partnership. I can recall many times eating, drinking with him late at night and discussing different aspects of the community, whether it be about science, conference organization, or convincing Elsevier of one thing or another. I was always telling him how great it would be if we could uh, accomplish something and get something to work. Michael always was a bit more cautious, listing reasons why it wouldn't. Inevitably, he would always tell me, you know, Gordon, an optimist is happy because he knows that he lives in the best of all possible worlds, whereas a pessimist is depressed because he also knows that he lives in the best of all possible worlds. I'm sure many people have heard the same thing from Michael. Somehow, though, I always feel he managed to succeed in, the, in whatever his endeavor he pursued. Despite his words deep down inside, I feel that Michael had a strong streak of optimism or he wouldn't have been tried and achieved so much. Michael has been my colleague throughout my career, but more importantly, he has been my friend and I will miss him immensely. I will now be turning the service over to the director of the main astronomical observatory of Ukraine Yaroslav Yatskev, who was Michael's mentor, collaborator, and friend throughout his life, and our co-chair for the NATO Advanced Study Institute that I mentioned previously. I think he can provide uh, more uh, clarification on Michael's early days that very few of us know anything about. Thank you. Uh, Nadia, Andrei, Natasha and Sergei, I first of all give you a big challenge from the Ukrainian astronomical community. I have no such words to express your feelings, but you know, I know what it means to lose the most close person to lose. Держитесь, любите жизнь, помните Мишу, как помним мы его. Dear Mikhail friends and colleagues, it is hard for me to believe that Mikhail is not longer with us. For this, I have special reasons. And not only because Mikhail has raised glory of well-known scientific school by Sobolev, Viktor Sobolev. And Mikhail has close work with my good friend, Edhard Yanovitsky. Afterwards, 
He has worked with my colleagues, Vera Rosenbusch and Jana, uh, uh, Jana Dluhach. So uh, for me is more important that Mikhail do not forget this, uh, 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 this first step in science, starting in Moscow and then work in main astronomical observatory of National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And uh, he always remembers this time and he always strived to establish close collaboration between scientists of United States and Ukraine. Gordon has mentioned many examples of such a cooperation. It will really a very nice time when we uh, were able to combine effort U U United States scientists, Russian scientists, Ukrainian scientists, and other scientists for former Soviet Union. I hope that we will have such a possibility in future once again. But nevertheless, we appreciate very high the effort of Mikhail to establish such a cooperation. And there are many examples of such a cooperation starting with NATO conference, starting uh, uh, mention the uh, joint research with our colleagues and, uh, uh, and at last uh, uh, Mikhail has closely participated in preparing our Ukrainian space project Aerosol UA. Aerosol UA is, is practically very, very, very close to glory projects. But we, and we try to realize this project using the payload which are uh, uh, developed at uh, our observatory uh, spectral uh, polarimeter and uh, multispectral imager. We hope and we uh, invite uh, everybody to join us. Uh, unfortunately, we lost such a valuable uh, advisor as Mikhail. For, for, the, for this and for some kind of special personal charm, Mikhail has, was loved and respected by many, many colleagues in, uh, in Ukraine. He was, uh, uh, I, I have not English word, he was an uh, un, unpredicted man, very, very charm man. And it was very easy for him to, to communicate, to discuss uh, 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 different problem. Uh, uh, Nadia has mentioned many, many his uh, uh, charming uh, characters which we face. And I was uh, very glad, and I was proud to, 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 to tell Mikhail as my uh, younger colleague and friend. Uh, so, we will also remember Mikhail, and uh, this is big loss for all of us, for science in the United States and in Ukraine. And uh, uh, we will never forget him. And in the near future, we will publish several papers in Ukrainian journal, Kinematics and Physics of Celestial Bodies, which, is, uh, uh, which has uh, English translated uh, translation and the journal uh, Space Science Technology, uh, which uh, are in Web of Science uh, uh, included, and other uh, popular magazine mentioned about Mikhail, about good example to young generation of science. Because I don't know if you have such a problem in the United States, but in Ukraine, it is very, very large problem to invite young people to, to, to do science. And Mikhail will uh, uh, give us possibility to show the good examples as the talent and head work could give the uh, person to rise such a high position in science and to be uh, uh, 
a pop to be well known <laughs> in world uh, science. Once again, Nadia and uh, 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 children of Mikhail, I invite you to Kiev to be our guest, and we will be lucky. Uh, and uh, of course, I invite everybody. This maybe this coronavirus action will will stop somewhere, and we will have the good memory meeting in Kiev at Main Astronomical Observatory. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yatsky, and thank you, Gordon. Now we would like to go to the next of the speakers. Given the time, we will uh, try to be brief. And after we are done, we can still go around. And as Gordon said, that we used to have these long coffee breaks. So after our discussions are over, we can continue in a free fall of events if you want to stay. But let's go with three minute discussions uh, now. Next is, I would like to ask uh, uh, people from New York, from uh, GIS to talk a little bit. And I thank Brian to arrange all these things. And I think the first person who will talk is Jim Hansen. Correct, Brian? Uh, so we would like to have Jim, if he's around. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Welcome. Yeah, Jim. thanks very much uh, for organizing this uh, for Michael. It's, you know, it's very difficult to come to terms with Michael's loss at, at such a young age. Uh, but Michael's uh, prodigious scientific accomplishments set him apart and above uh, us more ordinary scientists. But you know about that. It, it's uh, a public legacy. Uh, Michael left his mark in science, which will remain and it will even grow in the future. But what I will remember about Michael is something uh, that is perhaps uh, even more extraordinary. When Michael arrived at GIS uh, in the early 1990s uh, as a gift uh, from the Ukraine, uh, uh, I don't think uh, he realized <laughs> the situation that he was getting into. Uh, you know, human life and behavior uh, do not follow Maxwell's equations, the laws of physics. Sometimes life is uh, unfair. And how do we react to that? Michael, reacted with an integrity and with courage that were remarkable and never wavered. That's, um, that's what I remember about him. You know, Michael uh, dreamed about using the great potential of uh, precise polarimetry uh, to measure the most difficult quantities, the climate forcing by change, human made changes of aerosols and clouds. And he could have done it. In fact, he developed the potential to do it. Um, the odds were stacked against Michael. First, uh, he had come to a maverick organization that was out of favor with the powers that be. And second, Michael insisted on speaking truth to power about the shortcomings of alternative approaches, no matter how much money had been spent on them. And a bureaucracy uh, does not always appreciate the truth. Michael knew that, but he never wavered in speaking the truth. Now, Michael almost achieved his mission 
uh, which was appropriately titled Glory. Uh, but after, uh, after NASA launched Glory into the Antarctic Ocean, Michael came to my office and he was uh, subdued, of course. Um, and we both realized that the chances that NASA would support a replacement was uh, somewhere between slim and none. And I'm sure that colored the rest of his life. But he, he carried on with his honesty and his courage and his scientific brilliance, which did not wane. You know, now uh, we need to achieve Michael's dream more than ever. It's crucial for the task of dialing back uh, human-made climate change and restoring a healthy climate. And when we achieve that, it will be in good part because of the foundation that Michael laid. And that too is how we can and will remember uh, Michael Mashenko. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jim. This was very nice of you telling uh, how he has been helping GIS and the other way around. Next is we would like to uh, ask Andy, Andy Lakes. In the last year, Andy and Michael were together in, uh, along with us at the Radiation Symposium, International Radiation Symposium in Athens. Um, so Andy, you are here, right? Yes. Oh, uh, thank you, Bernard. Nice to see you again. <clears throat> it has. Um, uh, Michael has uh, been a uh, close friend and colleague uh, to us since uh, uh, since the summer of 1992. Uh, that is when we first learned that he had uh, uh, come to the United States and was uh, residing in Texas. So we immediately contacted him and. Uh, asked him to give a talk at GIS at the, uh, in New York. And he came, gave a talk, and we immediately offered him uh, a job to uh, work on climate and radiation, whatever else he wanted to do at the uh, Goddard Institute for Space that he's here in New, in New York. Uh, fortunately for us, he accepted without any, uh, uh, without any applications or any you know, references in there. And uh, uh, so that was a, uh, for uh, us, I guess, the uh, best thing that ever happened to radiation uh, work that we are doing here. Uh, Michael had a very fundamental understanding of uh, uh, radiation, everything about it. And whenever we had a question, it was go to Michael to see what the problem is. So, that, for example, uh, uh, there's a big uh, uncertainty between the uh, uh, for Rayleigh scattering uh, for between the the uh, uh, scattering approximation and the vector treatment, and uh, we had no idea what you know where that comes from. It's about a ten percent uh, uh, error. Uh, Michael uh, looked into that and found that there was a second order scattering that was the source of that problem. Uh, similarly. Uh, in working with the me scattering, I uh, encountered what looked like uh, uh, discontinuities in the me scattering calculations. Uh, again, go to Michael and he looked into that problem. And this is where uh, uh, he, he uh, looked at that in detail, this uh, morphology dependent uh, resonances that are extremely sharp uh, relating uh, uh, refractive index particle size and polarization and all that uh, material. And that uh, uh, became an explanation where it, uh, these are precise to like, you know, out to the sixth decimal. And um, uh, he, this became the cover of his uh, uh, classical book on radio transfer that's gonna, you know, keep us uh, informed for time to come in there. Um, and at the uh, radiation conference in, tech, in uh, Athens, uh, that was again a, a, a very vividly memorable occasion where we were 
uh, have breakfast at the uh, rooftop uh, cafeteria of the Titania Hotel with a majestic view of the Parthenon just right across uh, from, from us in there. We could explore Athens together in there. So that's uh, the, uh, the, on the personal side, very, very uh, uh, memorable events in there. Uh, other things that Michael was very interested in was uh, promoting um, uh, colleagues in, in there. And uh, so he was, uh, we worked together in uh, uh, nominating uh, a number of about a dozen colleagues for uh, uh, AGO fellow and other awards in there. So uh, those are some of the other things that Michael was very uh, interested in, in there. So there are many, uh, uh, memories like that that uh, just continue uh, to uh, uh, give us. So we're very grateful for everything that Michael has done for us. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's up to us now to continue Michael's work uh, uh, in the future. So uh, again, thank you, Michael, for everything you have done. We're very grateful and appreciative. And we'll do our best to uh, maintain the work that you have started for us. Thank you, Andy. This was very nice. Uh, uh, Larry Travis uh, may join us, Brian. You told us that he may join us by phone. Is Larry Travis around here? Then, Brian, I may go to you then. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I started work at GIS right around the same time as Michael, but I was a Freshly minted postdoc while Michael already had a string of outstanding papers from his work at the main astronomical observatory in Kiev. I remember the talk uh, Michael gave at GIS when he applied for the job, um, which highlighted his wide ranging talents. Interestingly, years later, uh, Michael, with considerable amusement, told me that he would have had to work in a supermarket stacking shelves if he hadn't got the job at GIS. Uh, not that he would have been without an academic job for very long. Um, Michael and I had offices across the hall from one another for many years until the renovation at GIS moved us in different directions a couple of years ago. Uh, my son's a year older than Sergey, so I've watched Sergey's growth uh, with considerable pleasure and as, as they both grew up at, around the, at the same time. Um, one of the things I already missed as a result of the move were the impromptu discussions with Michael about science, about the details of radiometry, about the foundations of radio transfer, and strategizing about how to get things done. Um, it was really wonderful to have such an expert and generous colleague right across the hall. The main thing Michael and I worked on together was the Glory Project that Jim has mentioned, and which, for which Michael was the project scientist and which would have made the first extensive, really accurate spaceborne measurements of the polarization of sunlight reflected by the Earth. The project had a very long gestation period uh, before it finally became a NASA project, and Michael and I became quite regular travelers on the early morning shuttle to Washington, D.C. for meetings um, to move things forward. Uh, one thing that enlivened these early morning trips was Michael's comments about the politicians, bankers and businessmen after DC in search of power and money. While Michael's critiques were often extremely amusing and rather cutting. Once we were in meetings in DC, he was always charming and set a great example for how to soldier through with good things with good humor that while they seemed interminable were essential to making progress with the project. Um, the Glory Project had a rather bumpy history, periodically being cancelled, and so a moment that I remember with Michael regarding the project was when we were in Boulder for a science team meeting, uh, just been given a new manager, and we weren't sure what to make of the decision. Um, we met Brian Faithful and heard about his previous experience and plans for the project, and immediately after, Michael turned to me and commented, this is great, they've finally given us a serious guy immediately recognizing that in giving us one of their top project managers, the Goddard Space Flight Center was really backing us. I'd just like to finish these comments by recalling how generous, thoughtful and kind Michael was to both my students and all the other students who sought his advice or expertise. Um, while others will comment on Michael's delights in social events, he was also generous in buying beers for students when they graduated. But for me, my favorite times with Michael, um, at least with regards to GIS, were going to symposium 
uh, Michael's favorite restaurant and having long discussions with visitors over lunch. I have no doubt that many on this call will also remember lunching at symposium with Michael. So that's uh, all I had and I will very much miss Michael and all his uh, both technical expertise, but also his charm and his generosity. Thank you, Brian. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, we would like to have uh, Sasha Marshak uh, to have a couple of minutes, maybe. Is Sasha around? Trying to. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Sasha. Yeah, I have known Michael since 1986 when we first met in the Institute of Astrophysics in Tartu, Estonia for a prestigious all-union radiative transfer conference that combined scientists from different radiative transfer fields, nuclear reactor physics, astrophysics, atmospheric physics, and even radiative transfer in vegetation. Michael, yet a graduate student of Ukrainian National Academy of Scientists, gave an excellent presentation that impressed many world experts in the field. It was more than 34 years ago. Since then, Michael has become one of the leading scientists, not only in the field of theoretical radiative transfer in both astrophysics and atmospheric physics, but also in remote sensing. I heard many Michael presentations and invited lectures at big international symposiums and uh, medium-sized conferences, or even at small conferences, team meetings. His lectures were always very physics-based, informative, and I would even say unexpected. I will give you one example. In October 1999, we were both invited to teach atmospheric remote sensing in Trieste, Italy. Michael was one of the best lecturers there with students all around the world, enjoying every word he said and every lecture he gave there. I remember that my wife who attended this meeting as a guest told me that she was deeply impressed by the way Mike spoke with his English and the fundamental physical insight of his presentations. Yes, yeah, three of his books, Light Scattering by Non-Spherical Particles, Scattering Absorption and Emission of Light by Small Particles, and Multiple Scattering of Light by Particles are on my desk in my office and I frequently use them when we need help in physical interpretation of some remote sensing observations of spherical ice or aerosol particles. It's hard to believe. In front of me is my letter of support for Mike's nomination for PCORA award dated just March 9, 20, 2020. Yeah, Michael and his work will be always with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sasha. Uh, appreciate it. Now we have heard from family. We have heard about the, the conferences, his time back in uh, his old country. Uh, but the uh, I met Michael first time when JQSRT uh, started a new editorship. And it, uh, Prasad Varanasi was stepping down. And uh, at that time, Sharon Durmagier, the editor, the publishing editor of the journal, contacted me, Larry Rotman, and Michael Mishenko. So what we would like to do is we would like to invite Sharon Durmagier and the following uh, uh, publishing editor, Jose Stoop, 
And then the current uh, publishing editor, Lion van der Zandt, uh, just to talk a little bit about Michael. And after that, Larry is going to talk. Larry, Michael, and I started it at the same time back in 2006. And Ping Yang uh, has uh, accepted the offer this year. And he's the new editor-in-chief. He's one of the new editors-in-chief at the journal. So he will talk a little bit. And I have to tell you that this uh, one of the most striking things I have heard was from Andre, Michael's son. Uh, when I contacted him, uh, he mentioned that the, the teal and white covers of JQSRT is what he remembered from his house. <laughs> because he always, Michael has always carried JQSRT to his house. So given that, I would like to invite Sharon first and then uh, Jose and then La Leanne. And by the way, Leanne is going to have a surprise announcement at the end. So I'll leave it to her. And we'll follow. Thank okay. you so much, uh, Pinar. Thanks for this opportunity. And we have so many wonderful memories together. It's nice to see many of the familiar faces again. We'd, lo we'd love to say a few words about Michael on behalf of Elsevier, the three of us. Elsevier, the publisher of the journal, he worked on for so many, many years with much passion and devotion, really totally committed uh, to this research community. I'm Sharon Duermeyer, as Pinar has said, and personally started to work with Michael in 2006, when he, with Pinar and Larry, took over the leadership for the journal Quantitative Spectroscopy uh, and Radiative Transfer, or as we all say, JQSRT in short. Uh, you may remember those were tough and crazy times that involved so, so much work. We had many editorial um, uh, board meetings and they were really instrumental in shaping the strategy and the development for JQSRT in the future. In preparation of today, I was reading through our old editorial board meeting notes from our get together in Bodrum, Pinar, I'm sure you also remember, in the summer of 2007. And many of the associate editors from JQSRT at the time complimented the board uh, on how quickly the, the journal has been turned around in a positive direction. At that time, right there, we started handing out the awards for early career researchers in each of the three subdisciplines the journal covers. And a few years later, at the memorable Taromina conference, we started with the by now famous and highly regarded Lifetime Achievement Awards. I don't know many people in my professional and personal life who are of the real warmth and genuine character as Michael was, truly honest and open. He was to me very sharp and witty at the same time, which made him a great observer and a visionary. I'm really grateful for having had the pleasure to work with him so closely for a number of years. He was able to create personal connections and building bridges between others as no one else. He was actually also instrumental in creating special friendships lasting until today. Bringing people together can only be your strength if you're genuinely interested in others, uh, which he always was. And of course, often, as we've already heard uh, from uh, our previous speakers, this was often uh, while we were enjoying good food and nice strong drinks. Michael, I want to thank you for bringing such kindness in our lives. I would now to like to hand over to Jose Stoop, my colleague who was the, also the JQSRT publisher after me. Jose? Oh, perhaps Jose still needs to uh, be unmuted. Oh, he may, oh yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank yes. you, thank you, Sharon, for these, uh, that kind introduction and uh, thank you for, uh, for inviting us over to this ceremony and giving us the opportunity to uh, to say a few words at this um, memorial service. So my name is uh, Jose Stoop. Uh, I indeed used to work as a, a publisher at Elsevier, uh, also overseeing the Journal of Quantitative Spectroscopy and Radiative Transfer for several years. Um, so I had already been working as a publisher at Elsevier in the physics department for quite some time when I uh, inherited JQSRT back in 2012. 
And the journal had not long before been completely uh, revamped by my uh, colleague publisher and publishing director, Sharon Dumeyer, uh, who you just uh, heard speaking, with the most noticeable change being the three new editors in chief that were running, now running the journal. So these were Larry Rodman, Pinar Magucci, and Michael Mischenko. Soon after I took over the journal, I started to realize what a dream team this was to work with. They had nothing but good suggestions to improve the journal. They were always responsive and positive, and together they really shared the feeling of just wanting to run a good journal that serves the community. So these good vibes also had a significant impact on the journal itself, where the impact factor in 2004 was at 1.6. It almost had doubled to over uh, three uh, in 2020. And virtually everyone I spoke to at conferences or universities would tell me how pleased they were with Jacob SRT and its editors. But as much as I love uh, a high impact factor and a smooth running journal as a publisher, I also simply enjoyed working with this dream team. We met first in person at several occasions with the ELS conference as our home base. And even once in New York at Michael's office at GIS, which was quite special for me. And during these visits, uh, we not only had constructive meetings with the editors and, the, and also the attending associate editors, but we also just had a lot of fun uh, during our numerous, numerous business and informal dinners and conference banquets at fantastic venues. Michael, uh, as mentioned before, was the driving force behind many improvements introduced at the journal. So relaunching the Young Scientist Awards into the James Rold Raymond Fiscanta and the Peter Waterman Award for the light scattering section of the journal was one of them. It was always a great pleasure to announce these awards during the conference dinners together with the editors and seeing the pride and the humbled faces of the winners. Establishing the Lifetime Achievement Awards was probably even a more noticeable achievement. Set up from scratch in 2011, uh, Michael and the other editors managed to make these awards highly prestigious and desired within a short time span. The awardee selection process was always carried out very thoroughly and conscientious, leading to prominent and very deserving awardees. It was therefore almost no surprise to me that Michael was awarded the Hendrik van der Hulst Award for Light Scattering in 2013 himself, an event that was celebrated with a big bottle of Russian vodka appeared out of nothing after the ceremony and was empty in no time. And what made that evening extra special was the attendance of Peter Waterman's widow, Karen Waterman, and her daughter, coming over from the US as guest of honors. Of course, all arranged by the tireless efforts of Michael, who was a big admirer of Professor Waterman. In 2018, we launched uh, Physics Open, a new open access journal in physics, with a board composed of editors from associated already established journals. And when I asked Michael to join as an editor, he said yes. And when I asked him later to become editor in chief of this journal, he again said yes. You may imagine I was very happy with that, but not really surprised that he accepted being Michael as he was. And also as expected, he did a great job supporting the journal next to his editorship at Jake Wizard until his passing away. Last year, I moved to a different position within Elsevier and therefore had to say goodbye to Jacob SRT as a publisher. I can honestly say that overseeing Jacob SRT was amongst the most rewarding and nicest part of my job as a publisher. Michael has been invaluable in getting the journal at the level as it has reached today, and he is greatly missed as editor in chief, but moreover as the enthusiastic, inspiring, and compelling man that I got to know over the years. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. I remember all these days. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was emotional. Um, it was really emotional. Thank yeah. you. Now, I think Liana. Uh, I think, good. yeah, I think Liana uh, wants to say a few words as well, the current publisher of, of the journal. Diana should unmute herself, I guess. Uh, Is this better? Yes. All right. 
thank you. My name is Liana van der Sand. I inherited JQSRT from Jose at the start of this year when I started working as publisher of the journal. Uh, Michael and I were in touch to organize the Van der Hulst, Waterman and Goody Awards. And working together for the first half of this year was very pleasant. Uh, we had plans to get together at the ELS conference in St. Petersburg this July. But as the conference was postponed due to COVID, I unfortunately never had the pleasure of meeting Michael in person. The editors and I decided to establish an award in Michael's name. Uh, the specifics of the selection criteria, criteria still have to be decided by the awards committee, but it is certain that the award will be given to those who contributed most to both science and society. The Michael Mashenko Award will be awarded every two years starting next year and hold a monetary aspect of $1,250. It will be a lifetime achievement award regardless of age, nationality, profession, and will not be tied to any specific conference. Further to this, we also plan to organize a virt virtual special issue in Michael's name that will have a number of his reprints and most influential papers from the past. As I am only starting to get to know this community, it's truly overwhelming to see what an immense effect Michael's passing has on everyone. So I just want to express my sincere condolences to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. And um, it was very nice that you also cracked the news about the, the new award. And I think we will begin to talk about this uh, starting next week, as early as next week. And, uh, be, and after all, he has a meteor named after him, right? There should be an award after him as well. So next, I would like to ask uh, Larry to talk for a few minutes. Uh, again, Larry uh, Rotman from Harvard Smithsonian and Michael and I uh, have been working on some of these details for such a long time. So uh, I have seen Larry around. Are you there, Larry? Can you unmute yes. yourself? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Okay, thank you, Pinar. Yeah, as uh, Jose uh, mentioned, uh, Michael Pinar and I were working actually as associate editors prior to 2006. And then 2006, um, uh, upon the uh, uh, retirement from JQSRT of um, Prasad Varanasi, uh, we were chosen uh, to form a sort of triumvirate uh, to, to lead the journal. There were many, many topics, uh, uh, some very strong subtopics. And so um, Pinar took over radiative transfer, more or less, Michael electromagnetic scattering and remote sensing. And I took responsibility for spectroscopy and some related uh, issues. I have to say, Michael and Pinar immediately brought aboard many highly recognized international experts in their fields as associate editors for JQSRT. Um, Michael was also key, as uh, mentioned uh, by Gordon Bedeen, uh, in, in introducing many biennial awards into the journal. Um, this was, uh, Michael seemed to relish uh, extra work, I think. But uh, this was quite successful. Uh, one thing, in addition, Michael Michael added book reviews to JQRCT, although I don't think uh, there this exists so much anymore uh, with the journal being more uh, a virtual or electronic version. But he uh, this this was certainly one of his, one of his loves, as uh, Nadia mentioned at the beginning, and. Uh, so I felt it appropriate that I'd be in a library to give this. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Michael, I haven't read most of these books, but my wife has. Anyway, uh, Michael just uh, amazed me how many uh, tasks he was able to take on. I mean, of course, this has been brought to my attention by the fact that he accepted another uh, editorship in another journal. But uh, what one task, that was not, not a, for most people, wouldn't be in a pleasant task is he had to handle all the 
reviewing of the HITRAM papers since in JQRCT, a, um, uh, um, an editor can't handle the reviews of a paper that he's an author of. So I would always give the ITRAN editions, which are essentially very large review papers. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to deal with that myself, but Michael handled it with a real grace and, and efficiency. Uh, and that, as been mentioned, um, Michael really had a main, main influence on the fact that the impact factor and the reputation of JQSRT really grew uh, in this century, or at least since uh, since he took over as associate editor, uh, editor in chief in 2006. Um, I would like to just share one screen, that's if I can do this. No, I'm not, wait a minute. Yes. This, this is a photo, if I hope people can see, of Michael. We're on a, an excursion in the, Medi in the Mediterranean off the southern coast of uh, Turkey during, um, during the, this meeting that took can place in Bodrum. Can you share, it, again, Larry? Can you share it one more time? Can you share it? We don't see it. Oh, I, I thought I was sharing it. How do you do that? Just one minute. Okay. Maybe you've turned my thing off. I no, I turned it, turned it on for you. Okay. So you're allowed. Yeah, you are allowed, but. Can you see it now? No. Oh, that's, I don't understand. Okay, you can talk about this then. I, I'll talk about it. Um, it's a beautiful picture of Michael on a, um, on this um, goulet, which is a traditional two-masted uh, wooden schooner off the coast of southern Turkey during a meeting, a meeting we had there, the um, one of the electromagnetic meetings that was in 2007. I think uh, Jose Bench mentioned uh, it when we had a big uh, editorial meeting there. But it was an, an incredibly beautiful trip. But Michael on the boat, met an, an author, a very young author, whose paper he had rejected. But Michael spent the whole trip on board this uh, schooner, very calmly and uh, patiently explaining to this author why his paper, why the thesis of his paper had been rejected and what he could do. So while the rest of us were enjoying the scenery, swimming, stopping at various places along the coast, so I'm very sorry you can't see the uh, the photo, but it would really uh, strike home a, a chord uh, that has sort of been touched on before, and and that that's sort of a okay. um, a good uh, good image of Michael that I think has been hit upon before. And thanks, thanks, Bina. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Larry. I remember that conference. It is indeed first time Radiative International Symposium on Radiative Transfer and the Electromagnetic Light Scattering Conference was merged. We discussed a lot with Michael to make these two communities to get together. And it was one of the largest meetings we had. And uh, the problem with that Gulet trip, uh, I was so busy with the other organizations in Bodrum in 2007 summer uh, they sold my ticket as well. So I couldn't join you for that glad trip. <laughs> and so that was one of my biggest uh, sor uh, sorrows in life. Well, um, then after Larry stepped uh, out, Peter Bernard became the editor-in-chief responsible from spectroscopy. Peter cannot make it today, so uh, we don't have him here. Uh, but uh, with Peter, uh, we have also met several times. And after passing of uh, Michael, uh, we discussed with Peter, with Gordon, with a number of other people, and with Liane. Then we invited Ping Yang as editor-in-chief. So I would like to ask Ping to talk a few minutes about that, uh, as well as his interaction with Michael. Ping, are you around? Yes. Okay. Um, 
So, um, so Michael, you know, um, passed away on July 21st. And uh, that was Tuesday. So on uh, July 19th, uh, somebody sent an email to Michael and me about the face function you know, expansion. And uh, Michael replied to the email that was on uh, um, July 19th. I, I think the time is 9.52 uh, p.m. So as Michael's son, Andrea said, Andrea said you know, science was uh, in Fairbanks, Alaska in 1996 during the International Radiation Symposium. During our coffee break of the conference, we had a very brief you know, uh, discussion about you know, um, geometric optics. So after that in 1998, he invited me to give a talk at the workshop on light scattering by Lansberg particles in New York. At that time, I was just a you know, postdoc in Professor uh, Colonial's group. So I was really honored by the invitation. So uh, I, I gave a talk, uh, I was very nervous, but after that, Michael said, you know, oh, this is very good talk. So. So, um, so after that, he invited Professor Neil and me to contribute two book chapters. Uh, so because of that, uh, you know, um, interactions, um, we developed some, you know, research collaboration. So later on, we had a number of papers together. So I was always impressed by Michael's, you know, um, sense, you know, of humor, you know, and also he gave me uh, many, you know, uh, wise, you know, advice, you know, uh, for my career development. In um, 2012, I was, you know, um, appointed by our college as the department head. So I mentioned this to Michael. Michael said, you know, oh, you'll be uh, busy with administrative stuff, but don't give up research. He gave me an example. He said, you know, Professor Van der Kors, you know, in his career, he was, you know, involved in many administrative, you know, stuff. But what he's remembered is his science. So I, I think that's, you know, very wise advice. And uh, so Michael visited Texas a and twice. Um, in two, uh, 2011, Professor George Kadawa was elected as the Texas Distinguished Scientist. So we had a you know, symposium to, uh, um, to uh, celebrate the honor. So we invited Michael to come to Texas a and So without any hesitation, so Michael you know, flew to Texas a and So for the George Kadawa symposium, so here's a picture, you know, so Michael and Professor George Kadawa and me. And another thing is, you know, um, in 2017, I attended the uh, lattice scattering conference um, in College Park, Maryland. So during the conference banquet, so Michael said, well, how about, you know, you organize, you know, next lattice scattering conference. And uh, he said, you know, I will help. I said, well, with your help, then of course we can do that. So we organized the lattice scattering conference uh, at Texas a and University uh, in 2018. And uh, one thing I want to mention is, you know, uh, Michael and I uh, wrote a proposal to NASA headquarters to um, get some funding to support students and early career, you know, scientists to attend this conference. Um, so uh, Michael and I also organize a uh, number of you know um, conferences together. You know, for example, we always you know organize you know a uh, uh, session and the American Geophysical Union uh, annual meeting. So under the title "Lattice Scattering and Relay Transfer: Basic Research and Applications." So um, several colleagues and I wrote a tribute to Michael that will be published in this month's issue of 
the bulletin of the American Meteorological Society. So the last paragraph of the tribute is like this. Michael's groundbreaking scientific accomplishments and uh, tremendous service to the international remote sensing and radiate transfer community will continuously inspire us and future generations of researchers, particularly in the disciplines of electromagnetic scattering, radiative transfer, and re remote sensing. As a tribute to Michael's extraordinary scientific career, we would like to borrow the words written by Nobel laureate Sabrimanya Chandrasaka in a dedication to his role model or mathematical genius, uh, Ramanujan. It is hopeless to try to eliminate him, but he was there even as the Everest is there. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pink. Appreciate that. And I'm glad uh, you are on board and I'm sure we'll continue uh, carrying Michael's legacy. Before we close this JQSRT part, I would like to mention a few more things. As uh, Gordon mentioned, and later uh, we heard from Gis and then Sharon from uh, Jose and then from uh, Diane. Well, the, the, one of the str strong uh, aspects of Michael was not only science, but also he was building communities and he was really individually uh, helping everybody, all the authors, all the reviewers, and he was promoting young as well as well-established scientists. That's the reason during his time, we worked on pointing award for radiative transfer and, uh, and the Lakers Lace, just got the award in uh, uh, 2019 at, in Athens. And then we had the uh, Van der Hals award, of course, who uh, Hovenir got that, and then uh, Michael himself uh, received it, and so on. And this year we'll hear from uh, Gerard Guspe. He was supposed to uh, be given the award this uh, summer in St. Petersburg, but I hope we will do it next year. Uh, so given all these, uh, we discussed, and, and I, uh, before I forget, the Young Scientist Awards, the Goody Award, uh, the Waterman Award, and uh, Raymond Viscount Award on radiative thermal radiation transfer was also with the uh, help of Michael and, of course, with the help of Elsevier. And it started with uh, Sharon's initiatives back in 2006. With all these, of course, it was unavoidable to think about an award for Michael, just standing for himself. And uh, we thought about this for some time. And as Diane uh, mentioned, we are going to have this award starting next year. We'll establish the community, uh, a committee for that. And with Ping, we started discussing along with, of course, Peter Bernard's support. You, so you are going to hear from us about that. And we'll have a special, uh, virtual issue of JQSRT uh, honoring Michael. And it will be indeed a 60 year anniversary of JQSRT. We had a 50th year anniversary of JQSRT about 10 years ago. We published about 50 papers there. And I hope we'll have several papers of Michael in this special issue along with uh, several other uh, significantly important papers published in JQSRT. This will be dedicated to Michael as well. And on top of it, several conferences, organizers of the conferences, including ELS that will be held in uh, next year in uh, uh, St. Petersburg, Apollo conference organized by uh, Oleg Dubovic now, which will be held next year in uh, as well, and the International Radiation Symposium, which will be held in 2022, and then a Nanored Conference, which will be held again next year, which was supposed to be this year in Shanghai. In all of these conferences, we'll have special sessions for Michael, and those will appear also in their special volumes, and we may have a virtual issue for Michael from now on, as well as uh, the 60th year anniversary, which is before. So 
I uh, wanted to mention this to you in the JQSRT part. Uh, it was wonderful to work with Michael all these years, so I cannot tell enough, but if there's any time left, at the end I can tell a little bit. Now we would like to go to friends uh, session, and we'll start with Oleg, who has been a good friend of Michael for years, before even he became famous in light scattering. So Oleg, you are there? Yes, I'm here. Do you hear me? Okay, yes. Just um, yeah. Be before starting of the stories, I just wanted to share uh, some of my feelings. It's more than three months since Man Michael gone, but it still doesn't feel true. Like on my mind, I continue talking to him, thinking what Misha would say if I do this or that, just exactly as I did in the past before calling him. The only tragedy I cannot call him anymore. And I remember very well the day before he has gone, we were exchanging very few routine messages. Nothing indicated that tragedy is coming. And that day I clearly remember I wanted to call him and just to ask how he was. Somehow I didn't. And I really regret about that because I have this persuasive illusion that if I would call, it could change something. Well, and talking about history, I knew Michael's name well before uh, I, I, <coughs> I, I met him personally. And even uh, Pinar said, I knew him since a very long time. It's maybe not as long time, but we had a good friendship really. Like in a, well, when I heard of him, it was like beginning of 90s. I was finishing my PhD in a falling apart Soviet Union. And at that time, the books like those of Van der Hulz, the Boren and Hoffman were kind of Bibles for us. And uh, we heard of this young guy, Michael Mishenko, who was interpreter for Van der Hulz in, a, in a Moscow at one of his presentations. And that itself was impressive because at that time in, among our community, nobody really could speak any English. And also all my uh, senior colleagues were receiving his reprints. We are, we are discussing his results and his Michael's personality. At that time, we all, including me, were dreaming uh, uh, to leave uh, our isolation and go to the world. In that respect, Michael has managed to move to US, get job at NASA, and most importantly, become well-recognized scientist. That was a brilliant example. And I would say even now, then many of us kind of follow same life path. He remained an unreachable example. Like uh, Jim Hansen said, he published fundamental books. He achieved fundamental results and he's, uh, but he also was given remarkable lectures. And even in other dimension, like uh, Nade mentioned, he spoke English and his English for me remained the best among all uh, community of uh, scientific immigration. I personally started to know Michael once I moved in uh, NASA Goddard in 97. And he was very generous. He invited me at a, one of these uh, NATO Research Advanced Institute that Gordon mentioned, and about those at uh, Yalta. And about those times, our friendship started. And here, as many of you, I also wanted to again acknowledge that uh, organizing conferences and building communities was a passion of uh, passion of Michael. And this patient was contagious. He was surrounded by enthusiasts. And this is why um, these ELS conferences become so popular. And here is a photo of uh, one of these conferences we organized in Lille together with Michael. And uh, one of the latest remarkable initiative, which I also participated together with Michael is organization of these Apollo conferences which uh, a series of conferences which had devoted achievements in polarization. As Jim Hansen said, it was one of scientific patients of Michael. 
And here are a few uh, nice photos of Michael from first Apollo conferences, which was hold, held in uh, Hefei, China. And uh, we had a second one in Lille, and uh, Michael and Nadia uh, helped a lot, did a lot of tedious work on uh, editing uh, many abstracts and so on. But unfortunately, just days before the conference, Michael canceled his participation, even though he received uh, the award of uh, Francois Arago for the achievements in, uh, in the polarimetry. And here, I would like to mention, as uh, Pinar already said that uh, Apollo free meeting will be um, dedicated to the memory of Michael Mishenka. We still will uh, think how exactly it will be happened, but this is sure. And meeting should be uh, held in um, Washington DC. And exact timing, well, just due to uh, uh, this COVID situation will be announced a bit later. And Talking about uh, Michael's personality, uh, I, I would like to mention, uh, to say that he was knowledgeable not only in science, he knew a lot of history, politics, literature, and he was very interesting. The discussions with him was always very interesting. And uh, it's not a secret that he was devoted debater both in science and in just ordinary life. like, <clears throat> And uh, he didn't hesitate to explain, express his opinion, even if, it was, even if it was different with others, and even if it was somehow unpleasant to others. And that didn't make his life easier. As a, well, even scientific life, like uh, Jim Hansen mentioned, but he was always respected and loved and by many. And another quality of Michael, which all of us know, it's, a, it's his very refined sense of humor. Well, in a, our small community circle of friends, we were calling him a classic, just referencing to classic in electromagnetism. And uh, I often would, or sometimes would send him picture with him and saying, look, Michael, we have a new photo of classics surrounded by contemporaries thinking of ordinary people. And he always would fire back, thanks, I'm happy to be contemporaries. Now, thinking of uh, many happy moments with Michael, uh, I, I think we had many during different conferences and different events. And uh, on one hand, I feel very sorry, uh, I mean, but at the same time, I, I, I have some rewarding feeling because we had a chance to be part of uh, uh, Michael's life, such a great person. We were absorbing his wisdom and energy. But on the other hand, we had uh, many very happy moments, which I know were important for him. And uh, just uh, at the in the conclusion, I would like to speak to to, uh, to Natalia, Andre, and uh, Sergey. And uh, well, I just feel like it's often happened that uh, parents are not viewed by children in the same way as by colleagues and friends. And some important aspects uh, uh, remained miss. In that respect, I would like to say that your father was a really exceptional person. He left us, and especially you, a bit too early, but at the same time, he left you such a rich intellectual and human uh, heritage that should be good support for the rest of your life. And myself, and I'm sure many of us feel privileged that we knew Michael Mishenko. And I Stop here, thank you. Thank you, Oleg. Appreciate it, appreciate it. I think, uh, now colleagues, I think we continue with friends and we have a number of people. Uh, we are uh, running late. So I don't want to cut you, but if you can go with three minutes, a little bit maybe over, that's fine. Now, I would like to ask 
to Gerard to talk a little bit. Uh, Gerard is supposed to be taking the, getting the, uh, uh, won the house award in St. Petersburg, but unfortunately now we will wait for the next year. Um, Oleg, can you uh, stop? Okay, thank you. Um, Gerard, are you, do you hear me? Can you unmute yeah. yourself? It's yes. okay, you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to read the text that I wrote uh, just after the bad news. And uh, well, my, my spoken English is not so fluent as before because I'm not traveling so much as I used to do, but uh, reading the text, I believe, uh, would be the best thing to do. Here it is. I feel deeply wounded by the bad news. I have many memories related to Mike, all of them very pleasant and enjoyable, just because <clears throat> he was such a kind man. Let me tell other two of them, which are not so pleasant, just because Mike is not here anymore. The first of them concerns a paper that I submitted to GQS30 with Mike as the editor in chef. On June 9th of this year, I was informed that the reviewing process started. On July 1st, I was informed that all reviews were received and that the paper was ready for decision. I received the same message on July 13th, that is to say nearly two weeks after. I found strange that the same message was received both from July 1st and July 13th. I therefore asked to get the reviews and I did got them. However, in between, I have been worrying with a bad premonition to do the delay between the July 1st notice and the receiving of the reviews, particularly because due to the counter COVID pandemic, you never know who could be infected. Therefore, on July 13th, after the receiving of the reviews, I sent the following message. Thanks, Mike. I am pleased to know that you are safe. Such bad times here. One week later, I received the bad news from Pingyang. I felt like destroyed. The second story is related to my Van der Hoes award. Mike was very severe with respect to people misusing the word photon. My personal opinion on this issue is much more relaxed. This issue is considered in my Van der Hoes essay in which I developed a photon-like bullet argument. Having in mind, however, that I was at the same time gently and cuddly teasing Mike. I know that Mike read it because he provided me with the complementary information concerning the Poincaré Einstein controversy that I implemented in the final version of my essay. The same photon-like bullet issue has been implemented as well in my Van der Hoek lecture, which was planned to be presented at the St. Petersburg ELS conference. As you know, this conference has been reported to the current pandemic. Well, expectedly, it will be for next year. Unfortunately, it will be impossible to tease Mike again. I shall desperately miss him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gerard. Um, like Gerard Guspe, now we have three other uh, greats of light scattering, Warren Wiscombe, Conan Liu, and George Katawar. Uh, I'm sure uh, you know them quite well, and uh, I would like to ask them to give a few minutes of uh, talk. Warren Wiscombe, you are here, Warren. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Warren. Well. Uh, so many memories. Uh, Michael's dislike of the photon concept, uh, his interest in coherent backscattering, which is a kind of obscure 
side lobe of radiative transfer and it's not covered by the standard radiative transfer equation. I happen to be interested in that because of scattering by snow. And uh, he was interested in that as he was in every aspect of radiation. I remember one of my earliest meetings with Michael over coffee, not long after he came to the United States. He told me two things. Uh, first, that he was sad to have to leave his native land and angry, angry at the Soviet government for messing things up so badly. He told me that contrary to the opinion of some American scientists, most Soviet scientists were happy with their situation. Unfortunately, with the collapse of the USSR, scientists there <clears throat> worried about their future and some left after the Iron Curtain opened, Michael among them. The USSR's loss was our tremendous gain. <clears throat> the second thing he told me was that he admired some of my early work on scattering by non-spherical particles. And I thought that's the sort of unique thing that I could talk about here. Uh, Michael pursued his passion for this kind of scattering and took the field to stellar heights. Uh, I would remind you of a little history. In the early 1970s, when I began my career and Michael was about 12, uh, we struggled to do computer calculations of scattering of sunlight from a size distribution of spheres, like in a cloud. Uh, if the cloud included drizzle size drops, such calculations could take hours, even on NCAR's Cray supercomputer. Non-spherical particles were completely beyond our reach computationally, notwithstanding the 1973 discrete dipole approximation and the 1975 exact solution for scattering by spheroids. As for things like ice crystals and soot particles, well, they were spheres as far as we were concerned. Frustrated by this situation and aware of Waterman's T-matrix method for scattering from a particle of any shape, I launched a small project at NCAR in 1979 with a postdoc, Alberto Munyai. We invented Chebyshev particle shapes in order to study continuously deformable particles with concave parts. These still prove very difficult, even for the T-matrix method, because we were basically trying to sum a theoretically infinite series that stubbornly converged very slowly. We often joked that we couldn't even handle a golf ball with its many dimples. Alberto and I abandoned this work by 1989 after several papers. We were depressed about how little we could actually compute and how few general conclusions we could draw. But Michael picked up this ball and developed and extended the T-matrix method to handle everything from golf balls to fuzzy soot particles, oriented ice crystals, and other shapes that Alberto and I could only dream of. This was a phenomenal contribution. Um, I'll close by saying that Michael was one of the most incisive thinkers I've ever had the privilege of knowing. He was a real Superman of science. I feel not just sadness, but, sorry, I didn't think this would happen. Uh, deep sorrow at his premature loss. So much so I found it hard to write even these few words. Um, uh, uh, a great light has passed from the world and we shall not see his like again. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. I agree. It's really emotional. We need, we need to make his name live. That's what we will try to do from now on. And I hope, and I'm sure, as Jim Hansen mentioned, his science will live for a long time. Next, we would like to ask uh, Conan Liu. Uh, Conan, you are here, right? You can unmute yourself. You can you unmute? Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, uh, when Pingyang called me. Uh, late night, 
say Dr. Liao. Ping Yang always called me Dr. Liao. So, uh, you know, Michenko passed away. I said, what? What are you talking about? Michenko is about your age. And, uh, but in any event, uh, I was, I was saddened and, and I feel that uh, uh, the world is not fair to such a bright and rising up uh, star. And uh, I, I, I just cannot use words to describe my sorrow and uh, my uh, uh, this uh, motion that uh, we lost a star for about probably he could be for 20 years of, of active research, maybe teaching as well. Okay, but in any event, I just want to share with you my three uh, stories. Maybe 20 years ago, I served as vice chair of the AGU Fellows Committee. Okay, and uh, so the chair is Hoffman from Germany, and Ines Fang is a member. And uh, so I, at that time, somehow I nominated Michenko, and uh, I said, can we present something, uh, some unique thing for the committee to consider? And uh, Hoffman is kind of, kind of, uh, oh, you are, he's uh, somehow not uh, very easy because, you know, Michael was, his uh, ranking is pretty low. But when I presented the case and Ines Fang said, he agreed with me. And then uh, we can come to the vote is six to five. So Michenko became fellow many years, 20 more years ago. So I, uh, I mentioned to Michenko, he said he was very grateful. He went back to Keith. The first person he talked to is Jim Henson. <laughs> then he became a staff, if I recall correctly. So that's the first thing. The second, Michenko uh, and uh, his uh, uh, OCO people, the carbon dioxide people, I forgot the name, maybe Anne Marie, maybe Anne Marie and JPO people. They are launching the, uh, uh, the uh, satellites uh, for the, uh, part, as part of A train. But in any event, so the, uh, the Edward Air Force Base is three hours from Los Angeles. So I actually, I, I have a telephone communication with uh, Michenko and Michenko, I say, Michael, what's going on? He say, oh, you will know next morning. And then next morning, early in the morning, I'm still in sleep. Then the uh, satellite go to the ocean and the billion dollars lost. So I, uh, I was kind of, uh, feel bad for Michael because he he uh, he has aerosol component. He can see the complex index of refraction, okay, by some manipulation and theoretical stuff. If he is successful, he was successful. I think he will become one of the top scientists in remote sensing. Remote sensing, in my opinion. And number three. Uh, Jim Hansen, I want to actually say hi to Jim, but uh, my old friend uh, nominated Machenko for the uh, Raspi Medal, the last one. I was uh, vice, vice chair of the committee for the World Committee for the American Meteorological Society. And I want to support uh, uh, the scientists working on the field of radiation, cloud physics, maybe radio transfer in general, transport, and so forth. 
So um, actually, I, I, I tried to present the case for Michael, but then uh, there's uh, one letter writer, Yak Yang, he is not here. He uh, placed uh, Michael as the caliber of Richard Goody. And Richard Goody is everybody know Richard Goody in dynamic, in uh, space physics, and in, uh, in radiation, radio transfer. Uh, but Richard Goody, when he come to England, he was appointed as a dynamic, dynamic of meteorology chair, but in any event. And uh, people ask, uh, and they say, how could my Michael Michenko, the caliber of Richard Goody? And I could not, I could not support him. And that's uh, something uh, I feel uh, not easy, but just to tell you that I try very hard, but uh, then I saw maybe, okay, maybe we can move next year. And then I was thinking about next year to support Michael Michenko for the Raspi Award. But now uh, my chance is gone. So just to show you that uh, uh, my feeling about Michael, I think Michael is, uh, is an unusual uh, scientist and from fundamental uh, to some practical applications. And uh, I consider him as a good friend. And uh, I, I feel the God is not fair, in my opinion. The God is just not fair in Michael's case. I mean, we have to do God, but uh, I think the God is just not fair. In any event, I really, I really feel so sad. I hope for the family, uh, all well, everything all right. And uh, oh, is Jim around? Let me. Jim is not around. I just want to say hi to Jim. If not, then maybe let uh, Andy. You could transmit my message to Jim. Say, come and say hi to you, yeah. and hope everything is well. Is safe. Thank and, you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Conan. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Conan. Um, now, the George Katawar. I think we have been with Michael and George uh, in Texas 2018 ELS conference. George, can you unmute yourself? You are somewhere around here. Yes. Can you Please. hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Well, yeah, nice to see you, George. Please go on. Thank you. Uh, well, I'd first like to go back to the year 1992 when Michael was leaving his senior scientist position at the Ukraine National Academy in Kiev. Uh, I actually got a call from his sponsor which I think was in Fort Worth at the time, Fort Worth, Texas. And she was explaining to me that Michael was seeking a position in the US, but had to act very quickly because I think it was alluded to earlier, he would be stacking groceries somewhere, which was you know, to me unbelievable. But anyway, I had, at the time I was working with Gil Plass at a and and we were both impressed with the work Michael had done on interstellar grains and his work in planetary atmospheres in general. So we immediately decided to try to get him a position at Texas A&M. Now, unfortunately at the time, we had a Dean who was, well, if I use a euphemism saying it inept, that would be too kind of a word. But anyway, he was. And the thing is, we had to go through the chain of command to get the position justified and certified. But unfortunately, things moved so slowly, we couldn't get him through. And that's when he took the position at NASA, which of course was NASA's gain, but it was greatly our loss. And the thing that still bothers me today is, you know, I think of all the students that Michael could have taught 
at Texas A&M and postdocs. And we already had the course planned for him. We were going to let him teach Jackson E&M, which I think Michael could have taught in a way which could never be emulated again. Now, on a more personal side, you know, Michael was always one to show deep respect and compassion to his fellow colleagues. And, you know, my colleague Ping Yang showed that picture that was taken at AM. And what was interesting about that is, you know, Michael was one of the first to accept the, nom the uh, in invitation to come down, uh, just to show you the kind of character that he had. Now, in that picture, you probably didn't notice it, but we were standing on the floor, and that floor was a Penrose tiling, and Michael noticed it right away, actually. And that, that I bring that out because Penrose won the Nobel Prize this year. He shared it in physics, which I think was, you know, truly amazing. So, you know, he had a side to him that, well, it's just hard to describe. I've, I've never met a person that was more compassionate than Michael. And I want to also go back to one of his research accomplishments, which were so many, but one that really stands out in my mind that was truly fundamental. And that was the work he did with his colleagues on, you know, deriving RT theory from Maxwell's equations. In my mind, this, this was truly a seminal work and was a mathematical tour de force. Now, Michael was well aware of the work that Rudy Preisendorfer had done on this subject, which was that book, was, by the way, was called Radiative Transfer on Discrete Spaces. Now, it turns out most people in the field have never read that book. But it's, it's truly a remarkable book, and I think everyone should go back and look at the work that Rudy did. And unfortunately, Rudy left, left us at a very early age as well. So it's, it's a profound piece of work, but Michael took it to the next level. And when he was using the far field Foldy equations combined with the work of Tversky, using those diagrammatic techniques, you know, I read that paper and just all that anybody would tackle that problem. Now, the thing that I really have to thank NASA for is the fact they gave Michael the freedom to work on these profound problems, which were very deep. And I don't even know if he were in a university, if he would, you know, could have worked on those problems, because, you know, they're not mainstream problems that are conducive to funding. So congratulations to NASA for letting Michael have the freedom to do this kind of work. And again, I want to offer my deepest condolences to Nadia and his wonderful family. And, you know, it's, it's a loss that I, I'm sure I will never get over. And thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, George. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll continue with a few of Michael's friends from, again, the old country, Jana Dulugac and Ludmila Kolokova. Uh, first, we would like to ask Jana to talk. Jana? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am Jana Dulugac from Kiev. From the main astronomical observatory of the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences. And I have known Misha, Misha is his name in Russian and Ukrainian since 1983, when Oleg Bugayanka, who played a very uh, important role in his life, introduced us. And since 1983, 84, when Misha became a PhD student in, at uh, our observatory, we were sitting in one room and constantly communicating. 
and then we had our first joint uh, publish, publications. And uh, our active collaboration recommenced from the beginning of uh, 2000s uh, and it was continuing until the last days of his life and the last uh, his um, email I um, obtained on the 17th of July. And now I have calculated that we have 47 joint papers published in scientific journals and uh, not counting the publications in pro uh, different proceedings, abstracts and so on. And uh, our um, study concerned um, the, st the use of uh, the T matrix method, the superposition T matrix method, and the uh, series of radiative transfer and coherent uh, backscattering to study different properties of light scattering by morphologically complex uh, medium. And also we had publications uh, concern, related to interpretation of different uh, observations of uh, solar system objects. And the last our work relates to study of plasma resonances of uh, metallic nanoparticles immersed in uh, absorbing media. And all this reflects a very wide range of Misha interests, and it was very interesting for me to collaborate with him, and it was very easy to collaborate with him. And uh, Misha persuaded me to receive uh, habilitation doctoral degree, and thanks to collaboration with Misha, I uh, got uh, the opportunity to attend many international conferences. And my email box is filled full of our, with our correspondence. And I will uh, remember always the three days, three beautiful days, which I spent in New York in uh, 20, 000, in 2017, visiting Misha and Nadia uh, after the conference at the Maryland University. And Misha then tried to show me as many sites in New York, and I uh, and he uh, tried to show me, uh, and uh, I felt that he's very fond of New York, that it was a great pleasure for him to show me New York. And uh, this was the end of March, but it was very cold. And when we were in Central Park, Misha was worried that the cherry trees were not blooming yet and that I could not see how beautiful they are. But he was very glad that he could show me the evening Times Square shining in lights. And last time we met in, in summer of uh, 2019 at the EOS conference in China and went saying goodbye with him at Shanghai Airport. It was impossible to imagine that I, don't, I would never see him again. And it is very hard for me to accept this, but I am grateful to suppose that it brought us together with Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Uh, next, uh, we would like to ask to Ludmila to talk a little bit. Ludmila, can you unmute yourself? Ludmila, you are there. Well, maybe 
we can wait for Ludmila if no, she's no. not. You, you need are... to unmute me, Pina. Or, oh, no, no. Okay, okay. It is unmuted. I don't know, maybe Messi or somebody unmuted me because it okay. said host does not allow you <laughs> to unmute. Okay. Uh, so uh, I know Mike probably as long as Jana, maybe a little bit uh, shorter time. We were uh, graduate students uh, together with the same thesis advisor, Edgar Janowitski. And I need to say also, I started earlier uh, working on my thesis. Uh, Mike started a couple of years later. Uh, Mike finished earlier because he was really very efficient and very good in science. And for me, it took a longer time to uh, defend my thesis. And then I can say this situation kind of continued. So Mike was younger than me, but uh, he was moving so fast in his career that at some time I started feeling like he's older than me. And he was not only kind of older, that he progressed so quickly and uh, reached such a, you know, good positions in science and uh, recognition in science, but uh, he was just such a, knowledgeable and wise person. So we kind of continued, you know, our contacts through all our lives. He was, he always knew things that I had questions. I knew if I have questions, I need to ask Mike. He, not only in science, in science, of course, but also he helped me with selection, like uh, where to publish my papers. He helped me how to learn English. Uh, when I moved to the United States, he gave me numerous advice how to arrange my life in the United States and uh, uh, told me about the traditions, the kind of uh, uh, working at the American University. So really he was a huge source of all type of information that people already uh, mentioned this. And again, I say, I felt like he was, I would say my older brother. So older because he knew much more and the kind of achieved much more, but also uh, because uh, uh, he was, really helpful with everything and gave very good advice when I needed it. Uh, I have one bad experience, uh, I would say, bad about myself. So my last contact with Mike was in May, in May 2020, when he asked me to review a paper for JQSRT. And it was a time when I already, during the lockdown since March, I already reviewed 10 papers. And I said, no, no, enough. I will not review this paper. And I still regret about this because, you know, this was my probably the last opportunity to work with my <clears throat> And now I want to say about some practical things. Uh, so people told a lot about uh, Mike's heritage, about his books, about his uh, editing at JQSRT, organizing conferences. He actually did one more huge service to our community. And this service is his uh, GIS website. I know that many of us, and uh, I, I can say about myself, they refer to this website very often. I do it maybe once a month because they're again, like a source of all type of information and codes and everything. And I hope that uh, uh, this website will be maintained and will serve to our community for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Ludmila. Next up is Ted Kostyuk. Ted Kostyuk. Yes, I'm here. Well, uh, I can't say much or as much as many of you about a professional relationship with uh, with Michael. Um, yeah, we did. Uh, he did help us on many uh, occasions with advice on papers that on planetary atmospheres that included scattering effects. He uh, was a co-I on several of our Earth science proposals at our group at Goddard. But uh, more importantly, I think, uh, and most annoyingly, was all these papers he used to send me to review for JQSRT. That that was probably uh, the, the least of my 
uh, at times, pleasant experiences. But nevertheless, uh, I'd like to say something from a personal standpoint, because uh, he and I uh, did have a kind of a personal relationship over many, many years since he first came here. How did I meet Michael? In uh, 1992, I was chair and organizing a meeting on variable phenomena in Jovian uh, systems in Annapolis, Maryland. And uh, at that time, the Soviet Union had broken apart and uh, all the uh, organizers of various meetings uh, tried to make an effort to invite people from the former Soviet Union to participate in our, in our conferences. So I wrote uh, to Professor Yaroslav Yatsky, academician who spoke earlier, and asked him to send me uh, names of individuals that uh, would benefit from coming to uh, to this uh, to this conference. Uh, Professor Yatsky answered uh, and gave me three names: uh, Alexander Morozhenko, Boris Ryabo from Kharkiv, Morozhenko from uh, the main astronomical observatory, and a third name, Michael Mischenko. Well, um, I didn't know that name. I knew the first two people. And so I uh, waited for, the, uh, uh, for them to, to reply. And I got an answer from only two of them, the first two, Mrozhenko and Rabo. And they were invited to this meeting. And then about a week before the meeting, I get a call from Barbara Carlson from GIS saying, Ted, we have this new scientist and uh, we would like to have him go to your meeting. Is it too late to apply or to go, to sign up? I said, no, who is he? Oh, he's from Ukraine, uh, Michael Mishenko. I didn't know. I said, great, we'll have him come. And Michael came and it was very interesting uh, watching uh, this young man uh, at this meeting, probably his first uh, meeting in the uh, U.S., uh, he was so shy, so quiet. Uh, he, he was obviously watching everybody, but he didn't say very much, very introverted. And, uh, but, you know, we got to know each other. We were kind of friendly. And then after the meeting sometime, he would call me. And he would call me as a... Uh, asking questions about how things were working, how things are here. Uh, you know, he was actually uh, unfamiliar, as uh, Jim Hansen mentioned when he came here. He really didn't know the system here. And so he was trying to learn. And it, but the most interesting phone call I got from him at one time, he called and he said, Ted, uh, I, uh, how can I talk to Jim Hansen? I said, what do you mean? How can you talk to Jim Hansen? He says, well, you know, uh, you know, should I just talk to him or should I? I said, well, and then it hit me. He comes from an, a Soviet environment where to talk or to uh, uh, contradict or, or not agree with your management, with your supervisors, wasn't that easy. And so here he was, apparently he had something to discuss and he had a, a dilemma, he didn't know how to approach it. Well, my answer was, you know, you're in the US, you can talk to anybody anywhere you want, as long as it's a polite discussion and so on. And he went on from there. So this development or this evolution into this society that he found himself in was, was very interesting. And it really became evident that his character or his evolution of his character became evident at a next DPS meeting, Division of Planetary Sciences meeting in Boulder, Colorado in 1993. Um, uh, at this meeting, I was sitting there and I was listening to him giving a talk on uh, uh, coherent backscatter. Uh, and he had this uh, calculation based on fundamental physics, uh, uh, explaining this uh, opposition effect, I believe it was called, Whatever. And uh, at that time, uh, there was a prominent uh, th uh, empirical or semi-empirical theory developed on this uh, phenomena and that people were using to explain these, uh, these, these particular phenomena. And so he came out there and uh, very much like a, a, a senior professor listed out his theoretical analytical calculations explaining this, this phenomena. This, of course, uh, 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 elicited a response from the 
a well-known scientist who actually uh, developed that empirical theory. And there was, of course, a, a, a kind of a discussion, I should say, a lot, maybe a, not quite heated, but certainly aggressive. And Michael just stood up and said, but my work is based on fundamental physics. And that was it. He was able to defend his position, and I could see that he was, he was not a man who was introverted or shy or afraid to defend his convictions. And this lasted throughout his career, and you all, many of you spoke about this particular phenomenon. Now, you know, I, uh, through this, I got to know Michael pretty well. Uh, he developed, obviously, into this prominent scientist, world-class scientist that we all heard. Uh, but he, he never forgot where he came from. He never forgot his heritage. And when he came uh, in New York, uh, he uh, became acquainted with the Ukrainian-American community. He uh, loved to go down to downtown uh, Manhattan where there were Ukrainian restaurants, uh, uh, Ukrainian meat markets. And in fact, every time I visited him in New York and I at that time, I made frequent visits there. Uh, they would, uh, he would bring the sausage from downtown and, and uh, treat me to it. He basically uh, tr trying to demonstrate how much he's, uh, he cared for, for uh, I guess, my visit. Uh, he also became uh, uh, and was elected member of the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences in the United States. And he be eventually became a vice president of this uh, organization whose center was actually like only two blocks or so from where he lived. So he did remember his, his heritage. He brought his mother here. And that also showed his great caring for his family, for his wonderful kids, for uh, Natasha, uh, Andriy, Sarhi. But even in the early days, the many visits that we had uh, to... Uh, on Christmas, I would always go to New York around Christmas time, and we would go and uh, see um, the Rockefeller Plaza and so on, and the kids were just really, so I watched the kids grow up. So I felt like I was close, and I was part of their, their family. Uh, ultimately, uh, I just want to say that this, uh, uh, this, uh, passing of, of, of Michael affected me very personally, too, because from a personal standpoint, I did feel like I was a close friend of the family. I watched the kids grow up, as I mentioned. I've uh, had them visit us at, in Maryland every time I came down. He would, we would always have lunch and dinner uh, here when he came to Goddard and all business and uh, even on his vacation trips. Uh, and so an event... And we continued having, uh, communicating, even though our trips, my trips to New York became less frequent and his to, to uh, Maryland and to Goddard be, uh, Center became more frequent. And then I remember one of the lasting memories I have is when, uh, uh, it was maybe about two years ago, uh, January 1st at 1 a.m., that's right after New Year's Eve, I get a phone call. Who could be calling me in the middle of the night? I pick up the phone and uh, it's Michael. And I said, what's wrong? What? Why are you calling? And he says, I'm here with said he, and we made a decision that we were going to call our best friends. And said he called his and I called you. And I was just overwhelmed. I didn't know how to respond to this. And uh, I wished, of course, his family well. And that was really not the last time we spoke, but the last time I remember very distinctly. And so I would like to, to just tell, uh, uh, tell you and, and tell Michael that uh, I will remember you and everyone will remember you, as you as, uh, for your science that helped us understand the uh, atmospheres of planets, uh, evolution of planets, uh, the phenomena, and most importantly, the fundamental physics that go into our understanding of our environment. And so I think, Michael, 
uh, and we should be grateful for his contribution and also for his family who of uh, uh, Natasha, Andri, uh, Serhi, and Nadia, who will continue, I'm sure, as very fruitful and, and uh, positive citizens of this adapted country of yours. And uh, rest in peace, Michael. Thank you, Ted. Uh, this was an emotional talk as well. There are so many things to add and talk. Maybe at some point we will all do this personally. Thank you again. Next, I will go to two uh, light scattering giants indeed. One of them is somebody who I know very dearly. And uh, Dan Makowski. Dan, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Can you? Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. It's okay. nice to be here. Yes. Oh, one of my favorite, rec one of my favorite recollections of Michael is this being knighted by Queen Elizabeth as part of the 11th Electromagnetic and Light Scattering Conference in UK. Mm. My memory is likely flawed because, you know, this was a conference banquet after all. But I can recall that the queen needed to know Michael's qualifications for knighthood and was informed that he was an internationally recognized expert in light scattering. This seemed to fit right in with the queen's idea of for knighthood, for knighthood credentials as if scattering light was a skill that a knight should possess to go along with the scattering of other knights on the field of battle or scattering dragons. And so she proclaimed, I hereby knight you, Sir Michael, a brave soul who can scatter any and all light. Perhaps Michael could scatter other knights and other dragons but he did not scatter the people around him. Just the opposite, he drew us together. More than anyone, he made our group of far-flung individuals into a community, into a family. Among my most cherished memories are those from the ELS conferences, from a ferry on the Baltic to a table by the Spanish Riviera being with Michael and other dear friends, drinking beers and vodka and talking about addition theorems and wave functions and T matrices and talking about the nature of things that are true and beautiful and fundamentally incomprehensible. I will be forever grateful to have been a friend and a colleague of Michael Mashenko. Evo opened doors for me into whole new worlds of imagination. And for this, my life is so much richer and meaningful. To Nadia and Sergey and Andre and Natasha, may your great loss be comforted by the knowledge that Michael was loved by and provided inspiration to so many of us. Peace be with you, friends. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I appreciate it. We would like to ask Kerry, Kerry Muenen from Finland to talk a little bit about Michael. Kerry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. It's an honor to be here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I'd like to start, start this uh, short story from, uh, from the moment that I met Michael. And this was basically in 1992 at the Division for Planetary Sciences meeting in Munich, Germany. So this is one year before Ted Kostyuk's uh, Boulder meeting and, and Michael is presenting uh, fundamental physics results uh, already for the DPS audience there. And he makes, he really hits the nerve then also. So he comes part of the discussion that basically is ongoing still. Uh, and it started the early 80s when, uh, when uh, the scientist that Ted, Ted uh, Kostyuk mentioned, and then uh, Kari Lume from University of Helsinki had this kind of major 
uh, confrontation about scattering by closely packed media of small particles, which is which was a very challenging problem then and continues to be the challenging problem, one of the challenging problems even now. And uh, this was uh, this was the kind of a from the planetary sciences point of view was kind of from my point of view this was the direction and and the, the collaboration discussions that were ongoing afterwards with Michael and myself and there were a few milestones uh, during the several decades in this discussion the confrontation in this uh, uh, scattering by close back media led actually to to a vivid discussion in uh, in journals by Michael and this uh, this uh, uh, well-known scientist, not not to mention the name, uh, and I was kind of doing back backbone work for Michael in a, in a in a work where we compared ray optics uh, results with T matrix computations, and and this was to for Michael this was to establish his point of view in this discussion. This was I think late nineties. This this part. Then the story continued, and uh, I, I, I defended my thesis back in nine, 1990, and this the topic was the coherent backscattering, but it took like, I would say, more than 20 years uh, of development. And I consider uh, in 2012, uh, one of my work together with, uh, with Michael as one of the real benchmark papers where we were comparing uh, uh, my radiated transfer with coherent backscattering to exact results from T matrix methods, uh, uh, T matrix superposition T matrix method. So that was kind of a verification that coherent backscattering was really based on fundamental physics and could be understood in 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 this kind of combined radiated transfer coherent backscattering uh, work. Uh, then the problem here was now that. I was really, I mean, really, really very much looking forward to the St. Petersburg meeting this summer. And now there was a change uh, due to the pandemic, to the uh, 2021, that we could discuss the next steps. Because I was, I was really convinced that we would be able to do something as beautiful again as we did in 2012 with the comparison. We could do something together for, with some new methods that we had been developing in Helsinki. And now this opportunity, unfortunately, uh, has disappeared. And uh, this was really shocking for me to understand in, in, in July. And I, I remember very painfully the days after learning that uh, Michael had passed away. And this, this uh, kind of discussion had, had been stopped uh, abruptly then. Uh, I'd uh, like to be short, I would say that there's so much nice things said about Michael and uh, one occasion he was in Helsinki was uh, was the PhD thesis defense the public examination by Antti Pentila in 2011 and uh, I'd like to I'd like to end this short story in, in a sentence more or less a sentence that Michael actually said as in the final statement of this public thesis uh, examination. And uh, he, he was saying positive uh, things about Antti Pentila's PhD thesis and then, then ended saying that what you have done uh, is based on exact methods, ex numerically exact methods based on the Maxwell equations. And these results that you have computed, they will stay forever. This is what he said and I think uh, that's very much Michael, and we can say the same thing about what he accomplished during his career. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we will have three young scientists. These are, indeed, Michael has touched them in different ways. Each one of them mentioned this definitely several times from in conferences at other times, at other occasions. These are Maxim Jurkin, Matt Berg, and Matthew Franco. I know all of them very dearly, and Maxim and Matt Berg has helped a lot in putting together this memorial event. And they have been amazingly energetic, and they have done lots of things. I have to give them a lot of credit. So 
And I know Matthew Pranker, he happened to be my last student in the United States uh, when I was in, in Kentucky. So I would like to invite them back to back, starting with Maxim. Maxim. Yeah, hello everyone. Oh, one moment. Yeah, so I hope you can see me and hear me and see the picture. So since I'm representing the younger generation here, I first met Michael's books and papers and only then did, did I meet him personally. I think it was the LS conference in Spain 15 years ago, but it took me another maybe two years and a few unforgettable sessions uh, at Bodum Beach, one of, which, one of which you can see at this photo to fully understand um, Michael's mission. And I think his mission was uh, to bring people together and to engage them, well, in various, in various senses. So this mission developed further on and well, that's uh, the last time I saw Michael in action. So you see the banquet of the conference in China and the table, uh, well, in, in the front, the Michael's table, well, you can imagine that uh, this table finished uh, at least twice as much wine bottles as any other table uh, in this hall. But Michael's influence was not only on this table, it actually uh, spread to other tables and to the whole hall, like, like a force field, you know? And so I propose to, to call it the, the Mishinka force, you know, a new fundamental force, which affects people, so it helps them to communicate with each other and to enjoy their life and also to understand science. So it, it, it all works, you know, uh, simultaneously somehow. But Michael was also engaged, and I mean, not only in terms of uh, like socializing and drinking, but also in terms of science. So always at any conference where I saw him, he was always asking a lot of questions and these were usually very deep uh, questions uh, I mean, inside font, I think, well, many people mentioned already that they have uh, benefited a lot from discussion with, with Michael. And uh, so I think, I think uh, that the, this behavior of Michael and the atmosphere that he created around himself and well, the whole community, I think it benefited especially the young scientists like myself who who get into the community because it motivates them a lot to, to well stay in science, to do science and to do their best. So it's really a grand example of how science should be done and how science can be enjoyable in all respects. And also, well, one final thing is uh, like, like a lesson that I think we all should, and especially young people should try to learn from Michael is how to combine doing a lot of things. I mean, Michael did enormously a lot of things simultaneously and also been, uh, well, like uh, staying, uh, stay staying, I mean, focused on the moment. So because uh, the conferences, uh, he was enjoying the talks, he was enjoying the banquet, enjoying uh, any like um, sightseeing tour. So he was, I mean, doing all, all of it somehow. I don't know how, I, I, I hope to learn sometime how to do the same. And so, so I think uh, we will miss Michael definitely a lot, but um, his legacy already and his influence on uh, young scientists that he already had, I think it will last forever. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Matt Berg. Matt, can you unmute yourself? Um, I should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I've known Michael my entire student and uh, professional career life and there's one story that he was always fond of telling. It's kind of amusing. Um, back in 2004, when I was a graduate student, I applied for a fellowship with NASA. And a requirement of this application process was that I find a NASA scientist who is willing to be an advisor to me. And of course, I knew of Michael from his books and from his papers and, uh, you know, but I had never met this great scientific giant 
And after some encouragement, uh, I called Michael out of the blue. And of course, he answers. And I try to get a sense of whether he would agree to be my advisor and sort of shepherd my application through in hopes that I would get it. Of course, he agreed. And I got the fellowship. And that one act of kindness has completely changed my life. And in many ways, his support over the years has set me up for all the things I've been able to do. Well, years later, at the many conferences I've been to with him, um, and there, <laughs> uh, we would I would find myself uh, drinking with he and his friends, and he would always tease me fondly by telling him the story of that first day that I met him in New York for this fellowship. I was so nervous, and I didn't want to disappoint. Disappoint, and I'd never been to New York City before, and I bought a new suit. I had a tie. And as he always points out when he would tell this story, I had brand new crocodile shoes, <laughs> dress shoes. And so anyways, uh, I was very nervous, but it went very well. And uh, we had a great summer doing some work together. And we did work together over the years. He's really been very supportive. I'll miss him deeply. And I'm very grateful to have known him. Thank you, Matt. This was very nice. Um, next is uh, uh, Matthew Franco. Matthew, are you yes. here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I met Michael for the first time uh, in Kentucky when I was a PhD student or starting a PhD. It must have been around 2006, I think, when the GQSRT Dream Team started. And so my advisor, Pedar Menguch, uh, asked me to pick up Michael at the airport. Uh, at that time, I knew Michael via his papers and textbook, of course, on uh, light scattering. I have to say now that this was one of the scare scariest moments of my entire PhD. I was totally nervous and intimidated. Uh, you know, I thought he was, or he is one of the best physicists in the world, a top researcher in light scattering. So why would he care about me a young PhD student, not even physics and mechanical engineering doing research in thermal sciences. Well, I was totally wrong. I remember that one of the first thing that he told me uh, when I picked him up at the airport is that I had a very nice car for a PhD student, of course. Uh, during the ride to his hotel and then to the University of Kentucky, he asked me several questions about myself, uh, my research. He made me feel comfortable right away and I realized that he was truly interested by my work. Uh, interestingly, a few weeks after his visit in Kentucky, I received a package from Michael. He sent me uh, one of his textbook, textbook signed to thank me for my hospitality. Think that this little story here illustrates, in my opinion, one of Michael's biggest quality. He was inclusive. You could be a young researcher, old researcher, you could come from anywhere in the world. You could have a background in mechanical engineering, chemistry, physics, really did not matter at all. He would chat with everybody, making sure that everybody was comfortable and he would treat everybody the same way. I think that this is remarkable because it's a very rare quality in my opinion in academia where hierarchy and clique are usually the norm. I think that Michael's inclusive personality explains the huge success of the uh, ELS conference, which feels in my opinion more like a family reunion. Uh, personally, throughout my path from being a PhD student to now being an associate professor, Michael kept helping me. Uh, he wrote several references later when I applied for faculty positions. I'm almost certain, although I cannot know for sure that he wrote a tenure letter for me, and when I was assistant professor, young assistant professor, he kept inviting me as an invited speaker at DLS, even though I was talking about heat transfer. Uh, last time I met Michael in person was in 2018 at DLS in Texas. Uh, I remember we had a wonderful discussion with Michael and Pinar. We spent a lot of time during these lunch break chatting. I'll remember that for a long, long time. One thing, however, I wish is that I would have told him in person how much I was grateful for everything you did to me. Uh, I missed my opportunity in 2018, but I'm so glad that Pinar, Maxim, and Matthew have put this memorial together because now I can tell him, Michael, you changed my life. I'll miss you. Thank you for everything. 
Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. This was very good. Indeed, the reason uh, Maxim, Matt, and Matthew are back to back, a basic uh, <laughs> micro to their lives, as they themselves told us. But on top of it, with the help of Michael, with the help of Michael's science and personality, these three are becoming the greatest scientists for the, for the science of light scattering and radiative transfer. So indeed, Michael's impact is going to live with these three young researchers' success in the future. So in that sense, Michael is going to live with us. Well, next we would like to go to another great person, Nikolai Klepso. I think Nikolai, you are there. You are unmuted. Yes. So, yes, I am here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, I met Michael in absente in 1991 uh, when we. Uh, uh, discovered sim almost simultaneously some analytical uh, methods, some analytical um, formulas for orientational averaging in the theme matrix uh, approach. He had just started working at NASA GIS and uh, intensively published the first results of analytical averaging in the theme matrix method and he sent me coffee, copies of all manuscripts sent to different journals. In uh, 1997 he sent me chapter two from this book and uh, this book was supposed to be published as a result of electromagnetic uh, light scattering conference in New York City. By that time, I had a large archive of literature on light scattering and because I just uh, got my doctoral dissertation. And I wrote several pages of comments to Michael chapter with reference clarification and the like. Uh, Michael was very impressed with his comments and his gratitude and generosity came as a big surprise to me. He sent me paid tickets from Moscow to New York, from New York to San Francisco, where my daughter was and studying at Berkeley. And finally, he was also uh, sent me tickets from San Francisco to Moscow, thus my attending at conference and my first trip to USA became possible only thanks to Michael. After that, we met a lot at other electromagnetic light scattering conferences, but that first one remained in my memory for the rest of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. This, this is very nice. Okay, and uh, next one is Anthony Davis. Anthony is a good friend. We have been discussing with him all our lives at several meetings. Uh, Anthony, are you here? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Okay. Um, I will be brief because I'm probably the person who knew Michael the least uh, up so far, and uh, and and that's too bad. Um, that's too bad. I would have uh, liked to know him more. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of anecdotes about why I think I would have known him more um, had he not passed in a very untimely way. Um, I'm a radio transfer person. So I became an instant fan of Michael's when he published his early 2000s paper on uh, the, the rigorous derivation of the radio transfer equation that we all love. Um, from the first principles of Maxwell's equations. Um, I had been curious about that like him, but of course he did, he did it and I was only curious about how, whether it could be done. And um, 
and so, but and he was very proud of the fact that um, it could be done. Uh, it was purely classical, purely classical. No need for the photon. You remember that he had he had a big crusade going on against the photon um, notion, which was, you know, very misleading in his mind, and um, and I liked it to to defy him a little bit on that one, um, because. If it's true that he, I mean, he, and he did derive it from the, the classical equation then, but then I said, then, prob, then your radio transfer equation probably does not apply, stop, stops applying somewhere between X-rays and gamma rays because that's where quantum mechanics really kick in. So there must be um, quantum mechanical uh, or electro you know, quantum uh, QED version of the, uh, the derivation. And, uh, and I remember his reply was, Yes, why don't you go ahead and do it? <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, you know, being a, a NASA scientist working on practical problems, I never had the time for that. But I did uh, by a completely um, circuitous way uh, meet someone, a colleague from uh, that pointed me in the right direction. Um, and if I was at JPL now, I would be showing you a book that I acquired uh, because this friend uh, told me about it. And then this, this book was uh, written by a certain Canon who was um, actually a pioneer of multi-dimensional radio transfer, which is actually one of the frontiers that uh, I would have liked to explore with Michael too. Um, and uh, in the appendix of that book, there was, um, there was a, 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 the, the sketch, if you want, of a derivation of the radio transfer equation from this quantum mechanical framework. And, um, and, I, and I, I had a draft email for the longest time to Michael, pointing him to that book and saying, get, please get this book or I'll photocopy it if, you, if, you, if it's hard for you to get um, and let's talk about it. That was my, um, you know, and I deeply regret not sending that email, composing it and sending it to this day. And, uh, and the other train of thought I had with Michael was, he was obviously a very proud of his Ukrainian origin and um, lineage and scientifically, but also politically. And, um, and as you know, uh, I'll know the Ukraine has been in our news for many times in the recent years for all kinds of different reasons. And, and I always wanted, again, see, I didn't know Michael enough, but again, I regret not just picking up the phone and asking, Michael, tell me about what's going on in the Ukraine. I want to understand this country better. Uh, it's very important. It's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, geopolitics in the making. And um, so, again, I regret not making that leap. And I hope Michael is in a good place. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. But maybe it's better to give you a challenge. Maybe next time in one of the conferences, you can bring that book and discuss with the young researchers. So this story will be alive in the years to come. Thank you. I will do it. Thanks. I picked up the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Pinar. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, now we have a number of uh, uh, speakers. Uh, they uh, wanted to talk about Michael based on their registration. We would like to give them two minutes just to mention uh, a short story because we are running out of time. Let me start with Visevolot Ivanov. Are you here, Ivanov? Okay. When we are waiting for you, maybe we can go to Rajan Chakravarti. Rajan, are you here? Okay. Okay, I can I can yeah. you hear now? Rajan, you are here? Okay, yeah. Go ahead, yes. Rajan. You have two minutes. Yes, I am Rajan Chakravarti. I'm an associate professor at Washington University in St. Louis. I am here. Um, you know, I'm a contemporary of Matt Berg, Matthew Frankier, and you know, the, the we are all from the same uh, 
batch of graduates around the same years. And um, Michael has been, you know, my, what you call it a litmus test in when it comes to the, you know, the quality of research I've been doing. So as when you go up through from assistant to associate a 10 year process, and even as postdocs, you tend to publish a lot of papers. I would meet up with Michael and he would give me a thorough assessment of what he called it as pseudoscience and good science. That was Michael and, you know, I would take it very seriously. So uh, going back, I first, as a grad student, I presented a paper in AGU. I gave my first talk, which in a session which Michael had organized, and I had compared light scattering by fractal suit aggregates and compared it with theory, uh, you know, theoretical estimations. And T matrix was one of them. And then Michael walks up to me and he says, "It's a it's a great job, and you should collaborate with me." That started a long collaboration with Michael and his student then, uh, Liu Li. Uh, and we still have been collaborating. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we were in the middle of a project. And when this uh, news hit me, it was like I was frozen, uh, literally. Um, on a personal side, you know, as an immigrant scientist here in the United States, Michael would always walk up to me and he would offer me a lot of encouragement to continue doing good science. And he would say that, you know, the process will take care of you if you do good science. And he has been a letter writer. He has been pretty much, he nominated me for the Goody Award in 2017. And um, I am, I owe, you know, uh, a lot of, I'm indebted to him, you know. Um, for all what he has done for me. It's too bad I never got a chance to thank him personally. Uh, one trivia thing, you know, we had an appointed hour in AGU where we'd almost always, you know, meet up. And that is, you know, we would, AGU would have a poster session and they would, you know, give out free drinks, right? Uh, so long you have a ticket. And Michael knew that I do not take alcohol. So he would almost, you know, seek me out and he would say, okay, come, you know, uh, let's have a chat because he would know that, you know, he would take my free ticket and get another extra beer. So, <laughs> so with that, you know, I would like to end by saying that Michael's inspiration has, you know, left behind a long legacy of scientists, the next generation scientists. And I think through his wisdom, we will try to fulfill all his scientific aspirations. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. You're muted, Pinar. Oh, I thought I did. Okay. Thank you, Rajan. It was a nice story. The next person is Gan Ito. Gan, are yes. you here? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mignon. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Gan, and uh, I am currently a postdoc in France. I used to work at NASA, I guess, before. Uh, the story that I want to share right now is similar to what Rajan and some other people have shared already, and it's about how uh, generous Michael was to young people. So I did a NASA internship at NASA, I guess, in the year 2017. And then I was a graduate student, um, but I really did not know Michael Mishenko at all. But uh, I read his books and journal articles like many other people have, and really liked his work and fell in love with his work. So at some point, I decided that I you know, want to work with him. So I sent him a very, uh, you know, email. I sent him an email out of the blue asking that I, uh, you know, I am the student living in Long Island, New York, and I really like your work and I want to work with you. Uh, I saw that there is an internship opportunity at NASA. Is it possible to do this with you? And uh, his reply was uh, really positive. He said, yeah, well, th thank you for contacting me and interested in my work. Uh, we don't have an internship position open right now, but uh, I'll see what's, uh, what's out there. So uh, working together with uh, Matthew Pierce, who is uh, uh, education coordinator and as I guess uh, Michael and Matthew created a brand new intern position uh, just because I was interested. 
So uh, when I heard that news, I was uh, really, really happy and uh, it was uh, uh, actually uh, unbelievable that uh, they uh, did that just for me. So uh, yeah, 2017 was, uh, was an amazing year for me, probably one of the best years. And uh, since then, Michael has uh, helped me a lot for graduate school and uh, uh, jobs after that. So uh, I thank him uh, very much. And uh, I would like to continue working hard so that I won't disappoint him. And then uh, before I finish, I just want to uh, share this uh, image of the book. So the first time I met him, well, I, you know, I asked Michael that I, here is the book that I bought. It's, it's written by you and I want you to sign it because I really like your work. So he was like a celebrity for me. And well, he signed it and it's, uh, it was valuable and I think it, it is uh, even more valuable now. So uh, yeah, I'll stop with that. Thank you. Thank you again. I think uh, we are hoping to see you in the future conferences then. Uh, then uh, we'll go to uh, Ivano again. Ivano, are you here? I'm having trouble finding his name to unmute him. Yeah. Well, One then, thing. yeah, let's go to Benbo's son. Benbo, are you here? One Benbo? moment, Pinar. One moment. Okay. Is Benbo here? He yes. Be here. Okay, Benbo, go on. Yeah. Uh, I, I just uh, say some personal relationship with Dr. Mishenko. Uh, uh, 20 years ago, uh, when I was a PhD student and uh, I want to defend uh, my PhD thesis, uh, Dr. Mishenko is an external examiner. So we, we know each other at that time. And uh, after that, we have a very good relationship. And uh, he helped me a lot during my career for research. And uh, uh, I think uh, for the achievements, uh, the whole world knows his great uh, contribution to the community. I, I just want to say some personal matter. And uh, I think in 2009 or 2005, I forgot, we went to Ukraine for a, a NATO satellite scattering meeting. And uh, during the dinner, uh, Dr. Mishenko asked me, <laughs> did you get the ticket for tonight's ballet? I said, no, I forgot to register. And uh, then he put down the fork and said, I have some matter to do. Uh, you guys enjoy the dinner. Then he left. Uh, then after about one hour, he came back. He sent me the ticket. This is your ticket for tonight's ballot. <laughs> yeah, think about this is a person knowledge, you know. Everybody should admire. You know, yeah. in my life, in, actually in all other people's life, we really met some people, you know. To different people, they have different faces, you know. But uh, for Dr. Mishenko, he's never like that. Yeah. He's always straightforward, trying to help you and very nice to you. So Dr. Mishenko will always live in my memory. Thank you. Thank you, Bambo. Um, we have a few more uh, people. One of them is Lei B. Li, are you here? Li is a Pingyang student, but he has been in China in the last several years, and he was the organizer of the last ELS, uh, Electromagnetic Light Sketching Conference in China. Li, are you here? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So I would say good afternoon in New York time. So many thanks for the opportunity to speak today. So as a young research scientist, so I want to say that so I learned a lot from Mike and uh, highly appreciate his support in my early career development. So I started to learn life scandering you know, in my PhD study you know, in 2006 at the Texas A&M University with Professor Ping Yang and Professor George Cardwa. 
So naturally, you know, I get to know Mike from then. So you know, Mike's paper and the books are a must to read, particularly the team metrics method. So my personal interaction with Mike started from an email about the team metrics. So I still remember that you know, I was so happy you know, to receive Mike's response and the explanations. Now, you know, students often start to learn with you know, some simple questions. However, a quick response from a famous you know, and well-established scientist you know, is always encouraging. So in the following years, so in all our interactions, you know, I found that Michael was always efficient and very nice to answer all my questions. So I'm very, you know, really grateful to this. So I just feel that, you know, he's always working, you know, with unlimited energy. So another thing I want to share is uh, Michael visited the Texas A&M in 2011. You no, know, uh, Professor Pinyan just you know, uh, mentioned this. So that was the time I started my postdoc research. So I got the uh, very nice opportunity to present my research and discuss with him. I still remember his encouraging words to me. You, know, uh, you are still young, you, you have a long way to go. You should also try to develop rigorous and nice scanning methods. So you know that in, in Mike's mind, you no know, rigorous you know, is quite different from you know, other people's rigorous. So in his mind, even the DDM method or uh, FDDD method is not a rigorous method. So uh, I can sense that you know, in all, all his publications, his altitude also changes sort of my understanding about computational methods. So with Mike's environment and uh, working with Professor Pinyon and George Cardwell, I started to develop a new team metric computational program. So the embedding team metric method, which later turns to be a powerful light scanning method to compute the optical properties and the lens fracture and the homogeneous particles. So I want to say many thanks to Mike for you know, get, getting involved in this work. So in total, you no, know, we could also the all were involved in seven publications that were important to me. So a lot of the moment with Mike was in Leipzig. That was the 15th electromagnetic light scanning conference to celebrate the 150 years of Maxwell equations. I still remember in the back of the time, you no, know, I you know he learned that I got a faculty position in Zhejiang University in China. He uh, very nicely said that you no, know, in future we can hold the light scanning conference you know, in China. So please also let me know. So when you return to China, so I will re recommend you to join the GXIT Jello Editorial Board. So he knows you know, what's important for young scientists. So eventually we made the conference that happened last year. So the 18th ELS conference was held at the Zhejiang University Hangzhou. So Maxim just showed some pictures of the last year conference. So it, it turned out to be a lot of successful meeting. So after the conference, we are working on the ELS special issues for light scanning. So he was always efficient on handling the papers. He gave the papers I know sent out for the reviewers. So I was deeply saddened to receive the news you know, of his you know, passing away. Uh, you know, even some days ago, you no, know, you still receive emails from his handling of Jake's papers. So Thank from you. my interactions, you know, Mike was all very nice to a young scientist. So I learned a lot from him. To close, so I want to say, Mike, thank you for your help and the kind support in my early career development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Next, we will have Vesevolod uh, Ivanov. Vesevolod, uh, you are, you can unmute yourself. Yes, now you can start. You have two minutes. It's okay? It's yes. okay? Yes. Okay. I, I'm waiting. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we yes, hear you. Yes. You can start now. Yes, you can start. 
I can start? Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would mention, mention that uh, I was official opponent of Mishenko's PhD thesis and his habilitation thesis in Kiev. So, and later I met him many, many times in uh, St. Petersburg, Kiev, uh, Tartu, Estonia, and in New York. Uh, and we discussed a lot, a lot of problems in radiative transfer and not only. And I've been fortunate in my life to have many personal discussions of radiative transfer theory problems with four of its founding fathers, Chandra Sekar, Ambar Tsumian, Sobolev, and Van der Holst. And now I can say that Mishinka's name is to be added to the short list of radiative transfer giants. In one of his publications, Mike Mishinka, for me, just Misha, called the classical radiative transfer Colossus with feet of clay. By his efforts, these feet of clay are now replaced with those of reinforced concrete based on Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. And that is only one of many Misha's contributions to physics and astrophysics. Uh, now, now, I'll be short. Something personal. While still in the USSR, Misha once confided to me that one of the members of close Soviet radiative transfer scientific community was a secret KGB informant. Needless to say, this information was very valuable to me. My last sentence will be in Russian. I'm sure Misha's soul there will hear it. Склоняю голову пред светлой, светлой памятью Михаила. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. Uh, next in line, we have Eleni Palmos. Eleni, are you here? Okay, we'll go to Jopeng Zhao. Jopeng, you are here. Then we will go to Yong Jian Ku. Are you here, Yong Jian? Okay, I think we are done then. Let me tell you, what we had was an amazing coherent event. If you look back to each and every story, memoir, impact that Michael had on all of us, it really had given us amazingly uh, coherent view of the entire thing. We scattered the ideas, what I thought, this was really perfect coherent backscattering to remember Michael in real life. I hope we will be able to continue we will be able to continue our discussions in the years to come, in the conferences, in the special issue of JQSRT for the 60th year, to go back and look back to what Michael has done to the community and to JQSRT. And in the years to come, we will gather the special issue papers devoted to Michael in different conferences. So we will also look forward to come up with Michael's impact. You'll see all of them. And he impacted me so many different ways. I'm not going to talk about all of these things, but I could have added to many of the stories that you had. He was an amazing person. And in that, in that sense, 
I am not going to add anything different, so I'm not going to hold you here. Except there's one surprise raised hand here from Sergei Mishenko, his son. So I would like to ask Sergei to talk. You can unmute Sergei. You can unmute yourself. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, go on. My name is Sergei Mishenko, as you know. I'm the youngest child in the family. I have a brother and a sister, Natasha and Andrei Mishenko. Michael Mishenko to me was my great father. I'm very thankful he was my father. The last two years, we traveled a lot to see many universities and colleges. We traveled up, up to New York and Bear Mountain. My dad once drove my friends and me to frisbee practice. We both liked to walk in the evenings together along West End Avenue. My dad showed me the, the building where Sergei Rachmaninoff lived and we also drove to Sergei Rachmaninoff's grave. On the way to school, my dad told me many stories about the stars and spiders in the libraries. When my, when my teacher in middle school called me Butterfingers in gym class, dad went to Riverside Park to throw the football with me. Eventually, I was one of the more athletic kids in my class. My dad had a very cozy office with a window to Broadway. I also liked the Christmas party at my dad's work where I was able to meet a lot of kids. There was delicious lemon chicken. I'm proud to be his son. My dad was famous. My dad was a highly educated person. I'm thankful for this event, giving him honor. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. It was very nice that you got the chance to talk at the end. And I thank you to Andre, to, of course, to your mother, uh, Nadia, for being here. And I talk, I thank to all guest researchers. And I would like to mention again, this event could not happen uh, without Maxim and Matt. They have been amazing. Maxim has done a lot of things. He has written so many different things. I think they are great. And the reason we are here, the reason they have been this effective, because we all wanted to make sure that we will remember Michael. The special website we will create for Michael. We'll be connected to the YouTube channel and you are going to hear more about these things from Maxim in the time to come. So this was great. Maxim, do you have anything to add? Well, just a short comment that uh, you also saw it in the announcement that we have a photo album. So you saw a few photos during this event, but we have, I think, uh, almost 200 photos already in the album. And if you have any, so you have the link in the announcement and also in the description of the YouTube channel, there is uh, uh, a link to this photo album so you can look at it. There are some captions and dates. Well, some dates are on. We don't know them exactly. So if you can, uh, I mean, comment on that, that would also help. But also if you have other photos, uh, please send them uh, to me or to Ludmila Kolokola. We will also put them online. So, and yeah, as Pina mentioned, all, all the rest uh, of the uh, well, further developments we will send to you and also through like ALS newsletters and other means. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Matt, do you have something to add? Uh, no, I'm just trying to wrap up the technical stuff here. Thank okay. you, everyone. Well, this was almost three hours and it seems like we could have stayed here longer, but I think it's not practical anymore. But... Um, this will continue. So this is not the end, but it's just the beginning. You are going to hear from us. You are going to see more of these developments on the website in the conferences to come. And I hope we will see all of the young people receiving these significant awards which were established with the help of Michael so they can carry Michael's name to the future. Thank you very much to all of you. And play, please stay healthy. Bye now.